Wow. It's gonna be a crazy part of me looking straight ahead yeah. like a zombie oh i love this energy for the pod though dude this is what the pod is in my head damn this really is just as loud yeah in real life yeah are pumped right fans now. are excited because well honestly guys big week it's a huge week it's a huge game to be huge honest. game i mean we should say we're recording this one day after drake's birthday happy birthday drake he's got the six he's got the six uh so that's why i'm wearing the o- i just wanted to draw attention to the ovo bart hoodie um thoughts all right thoughts um it's impressive it's cool and did you, know that, did you know that Drake was collabing with the Simpsons? Like more than like just the sweatshirt or just the sweatshirt? There's, mo- there's a whole line of Simpsons collab clothes. You know what? I think I would wear a Marge one of those. Ooh, that would be, cool. that would be sick. Be that would cool. be sick. Marge how does, like how does the crowd think about that? They like it. Yeah. Uh, it's oh. also uh, <laughs> it's also guys. The NBA season is tipping off, and I'm sitting here right now with two uh, New York Knicks fans. That's correct. I'm sitting with Justin Levine and making his podcast guesting debut. Uh, Introduce yourself, please. um, I'm Ariel Berman. Usually, um, I'm the guy who sets up the cameras and leaves. Yes. Um, Today, I'm staying. Yeah, yeah. Applause, applause, applause. Uh, yeah, we're very happy to have you. We, uh, obviously, you've been circled on the guest list for a while now, and you're, you know, the the main reason that the show uh, looks the way it does uh, fact. here now. So we're very happy to have you on the show, and uh, you know, because you know, we're three. This isn't a sports podcast. No, no, this is just a having fun show. But you know, we like to watch basketball, mm-hmm. and uh, like right now. And the Knicks are playing their first game of the season. And so I figured, you know, it might be fun to just, this isn't going to be a, this is going to be a, right? This isn't going to be a chill cast. Okay. I've done full chill casts before. This mm-hmm. is not that. This is going to be a it's real a full episode, episode right of now. the show. But, you know, Ooh. the Knicks are on and they are losing as Jason Tatum hits another mid range jumper. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, you know, we won't, we won't hang on basketball too long. Uh, you know, we'll come back to it, of course, yeah. throughout the show. But uh, how how do you guys feel about you know your your team this year? Um, Obviously, no need. We're we've only seen six minutes of the season, so no knee jerk reactions. You're down three to the to one of the favorites to win the East in Boston. I'm gonna let this guy goes first because I'm sure he has a a big opinion on this. Look, I just want to say you got to raise up in order to tear down. And what do you? <laughs> What do you think he means by that, Ariel? He, he, you know, sometimes Justin says things, and I'm like, that's gospel. I just kind of have to take that one the way. Well, I'm just saying, you got to let the Celtics kind of win some of the battles to win the war. Make them think that the New York Knicks are not (laughs) their biggest concern. I like that. He gets it. I like that. I mean, as a member of the front office, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. you got to keep these prerogatives in mind. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, Justin famously middle name Rose, Justin Rose Levine, uh, Leon Rose's great nephew. Who's Leon Rose? The president? I think he might be the president. Oh, Oh, James Dolan. I think James Dolan. He's the owner. Dolan's the owner. Rose is the president. 
And do we still have? And these guys are pretty unanimously hated by the Rose is not. The, Rose, Rose is less. Is no, Rose, Rose is I think people are fine with him. Exactly. Yeah, people hate. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> let's go. <gasps> <gasps> We're so bad. Uh, that would be uh, Julius <laughs> Randle hitting a, a jump shot. His first of the game, one for six. Yeah, I like that guy. I think that's my big opinion. Oh, oh he's got a steal, nice so. play there. Snatching Whenever it Julius away from Julius Randle Porzingis. plays like this. Done. Oh, <laughs> smoked the layup. And smoked, okay. Whenever he plays well, it's yeah. like, oh my God, that's the best. Well, do you think, um, you know, I know, sorry, let me get comfortable here, really just kind of open mm -hmm, up. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think New York sports fans get kind of a bad rap for being uh, fair weather fans? For being, you know, everyone's everyone loves and is in on this team when they're losing, but the second things start to go bad, you know, they uh, they turn their backs. What do you think about that? Reputation? I don't think that's fair weather at all. No, I mean, I don't think it's turning our backs. As it's just like calling you them think out you for being yeah, shitty. You should demand more for that. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't think there's ever. Like I don't, I don't think New York sports fans are just like, oh, I'm not gonna watch this team anymore. I think they're very loyal fans. Yeah, I don't think there's a single person that I know that's a New York sports fan that'll stop watching the team because they're bad. Hmm. I think New Yorkers love to complain um, <laughs> when we're winning, when we're losing, and when we're not. But they also love going crazy, and yeah. I think that they don't get the opportunity to go crazy. When the teams are losing, sure, and that's more what they're mad about, and mm. the teams aren't winning, hmm. because when it's a different place to be when the teams are winning, um, like when the Knicks won the home opener, um, you should cut in that uh, side talk video when the Knicks won that ho home opener uh, against the Celtics like two years ago, one year ago, I can't remember. I think it was two. It was two. Um, they went absolutely wild. They went bonkers. They would go, they would, they would like break into, they would like riot. Like they would mm. just riot because we won one game. What do you, you've both been to Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you think about MSG? Um, is it the Mecca of basketball? I don't know, but I think, I don't get why people say that. I mm. guess I'm not, mm -hmm. I think New York is a really big basketball town. I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't see um, maybe LA with like streetball stuff going on. There's like yeah. some sort of match to that, but it's like it's weird when it's like the mecca of basketball when the team was really only won right. once. One. Um, I would love yeah. to see them win yeah. again anytime would be great. Yeah. But as a city, I feel like if you're gonna if you're looking for a place that's all about basketball, like it's one of the only sports you can reliably play in the city besides like soccer. Right. And people in America that makes are sense. not so huge on yeah. soccer. So yeah. Like you can play football in the city, but like you'd probably have to like find some sort of yeah situation. Some for that. sort of program. Yeah. Uh we should say, uh, you know, obviously Justin is in the third spot today. Um our super producer Katie Fitzgibbons. Take the applause. <laughs> um, super producer Katie Fitzgibbons has been working very hard on the show. She's uh, been running the brand new TikTok for the show. Mm -hmm. She's been working too hard, uh, too far hard. too hard, way too hard. Too she's and, down with uh, an illness, and she, I think it. I think it worked her ill. Yeah. And so she's been recovering. So we miss Katie. Um, everyone, send Katie your well wishes, and uh, we have the wonderful Mary Vincentia Hep. Uh, in studio with us, um, helping helping mm -hmm. technically since Ariel is guesting, and uh, thank you, Mary. You're thank um, you. Just a message to the fans: if you know Katie, I'm sure she would appreciate uh, a text asking yeah. her how she's doing. So send that to the Katie or FaceTime her or FaceTime <laughs> call her call some sort of email to yeah. work a send letter a care package uh, edible arrangement anything mm. you have accessible to you send it to Katie. Yeah, she'll appreciate it. Um, we just gotta, you know, before we get, we got a couple more items to get to before we really dive mm -hmm. into the meat. Um, there's a lot of meat. There's a lot of meat. There's a lot of meat. There's coming. a lot of meat to dive into. Uh, you've been saving the city lately? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I just saved it. You saved the city. It's, we're at peace now. That's crazy. We're not going to do spoilers on the show, yeah. but, uh, a very big part of our lives the last five days, yep. four days. Yep. Has 30 been. hours of my last five yeah. days. Yeah. Saving the city has been saving the city. This, this city, it's so great that New York, the, the Knicks are able to play today. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thank you. If Ariel to didn't the, get his you know, shirts done, 
You know, all I can ask is that me, Miles, and Peter have yeah. courtside seats together. Oh, that would be special. Well, you're yeah. gonna give away their nice. identity, or they're going as themselves <laughs> as Spider Man. No, so you just give away their identity. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You were talking about They're my friends, Miles and Peter. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Totally I, didn't, I didn't say as what fellows that I love. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. They're still okay. We'll we'll bleep that. Yeah, and uh, nobody knows, but they are close friends of the show, Miles and Pete. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and we just were really happy uh, yeah. uh, to be saving the city. I know. I think. <laughs> How we feel, Justin? How don't do we feel? Shake about, your head. How do we feel about the I'm game? I'm not Justin? shaking my head at you guys. Oh, don't you're worry. shaking your head at the Knicks. Yeah, <laughs> we're not a first quarter team. You know what I mean? We're, we're not a foist quarter. We're not a foist quarter. We're not a foist quarter. We're, not, we're, not <laughs> we're, we're in New York. We're in the New York Knicks. <laughs> pay the man, bro. Pay <laughs> quickly is the only one who's been able to make a mid range jump uh, shot, and if they won't pay him, they won't pay him. They won't pay. <laughs> no, they pay everyone except for quickly. Really? They've been paying everybody. I guess I haven't been up to date on. The, they've paid on the contracts. I uh, haven't paid Robinson yet. We'll see. And they paid Hart. They paid Hart big time. But he was kind of that was kind of reasonable. Well, I've told you guys what I think the Knicks should do, right? I think you may no, have, but repeat it for the, the team. Well, home. so in 2018, I watched my my glorious Michigan Wolverines, led by Mo Wagner, make a Cinderella run to the national championship, mm. and then just get absolutely dismantled by the Villanova squad. And like 40% of that team is already playing for the Knicks. You got Bronson, you got Hart, you go out and get Devin Chen. 60% actually. Yeah. I think you fucking you fire Tom Thibodeau. You hire Jay Wright cuz that guy will come out of retirement to come coach on. the fucking New York Knicks and his former prodigies. Mm-hmm. And then you go out and you fucking whatever you got left in your team, Mitchell Robinson. Julius Randle, maybe? That's you fucking no, you no, get you go no, and get Mikhail no, Bridges and no, you just run it back. No. You said these dudes Sham. won it all on the last level. <laughs> I mean they've developed. Let's see if they can win it all on the next level. That is fucking embarrassing. I yeah, I don't Come love on. that. I don't love that. The first part you had me in the first half. There was a part there where when you did had I lose me? you? You definitely Jay Wright. Jay Wright, like, dude. Fuck out of here. You think Thibodeau is the guy? I didn't say Thibodeau is the guy. No, I, I think if, if there's any <laughs> constant unity between every Knicks fan, is like we're cool with firing the coach. I mm-hmm. think that's we're always, always cool with firing the coach. The man. coach is always the problem, and as soon as we fire him, we'll it'll be fixed and we'll win the ship and it'll be over. But um, where you lost me definitely was um, get rid of the second now. Ju- 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 uh. <laughs> Go Julius Randall, I have a lot of feelings about. Yeah. Um, which is my main feeling is like, why doesn't he just like put it out there? Because he can. You see him just every, put it out there. Just put it out there. Just go out there, do his <laughs> thing. He doesn't do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Half sometimes, the time, yeah. So half the time I went to a game against the Detroit Pistons. <laughs> okay. In Detroit. Yeah, at Little Caesars it, Arena. It was not a season the Detroit Pistons were very good. Sure. The Knicks were okay. The mm-hmm. next that was the Kemba Walker season, mm. the first one. Mm-hmm. It was it was it was all right. A lot it was of stuff fun. to We're, get figured out. Yeah. It was not a game we should have that should have been contentious. Right, the Pistons won like fourteen games that year. Yeah, Julius yeah. Randle didn't drive for the first half of the game. Just shooting, just shooting outside jumpers, three pointers. Whenever <laughs> there's two guys on him, just was like, oh, I guess I'm in Detroit. I like. <laughs> It doesn't matter if we win. It doesn't matter if we lose. I'm just He's here to there have to fun. get paid. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, can we, can we yeah. not? And then like, I forget who it was. I think it was, um, Alec Burks. Yeah. Yeah. Went on, like, who a became f- a piston. Yeah. He yeah. hit a 14 point fourth quarter to win that game. Oh. But it was crazy that it was that close. Cause we were, I think we made the playoffs that year or whatever. Mm. Crazy. Um, so my feelings about Julius Randall are like, he either has to like lock in and get with it and like perform in the playoffs and whatnot, or he has to go. And Ethan, yeah. I mean, look, we'll move off of basketball. Yeah, we'll move off. We'll move off. But uh He heard me. Oh, he knows what he has to do. Julius Randall does listen to the show, actually. He knows. He he's gonna take this from me and he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna improve. So we have one last order of business before we get into the uh traditional mm. THDR. H experience. Um, we got re- uh, somebody reached out to the show this past week. 
That's crazy. And um, it happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we wish it happened more. Mm-hmm. And reach out. And the show is very accessible. You can reach out to us on Instagram uh, or TikTok uh, or threads. Are we on threads? <laughs> no, I don't think we're on threads. Right, but if you reach that. out to the show or our email, the Hunter Davidson Radio Hour at gmail.com, somebody, probably almost certainly me, maybe Katie, will respond to that. So it we'd love we'd love to me. have interaction. It won't be Ariel. It will not I do not have access to any of those accounts. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this past week, uh, as sort of an up and coming artist message to the show hmm. and maybe i'll uh, i think he he'd his name was fine. justin bieber <laughs> and his song goes just like this <laughs> my name is it bieber be- be- i'm giving you fever right. <laughs> but not like covid you oh. want to roll with justin <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good um well, you, haven't even the, you haven't heard the bridge yet. I heard enough. You're signed. Yeah, I was going to say. You're signed. I'm, you're going to sign him? I'm signing him. To THDRH labels? Oh, yes. I just got a text that says, Hi, I'm Rita Lee. Did you remember me? I feel you do not want to talk to me. You never responded. That's the fans reaching out. Somebody's heard us? Oh. What happened, Justin? You can't. You got to say what happened. Yeah. They just got a crazy bank shot from like 30 Ooh. feet away. Don't take Ooh. I'm worried, dude. I'm worried about except I don't think I I don't think this guy scammed me, but I am getting a lot of bot follows since uh mm. since I accepted. But we're not gonna we're not gonna I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. We were reached out to by uh Soprano Silver mm. at her cool name. at Hercule Hercule He's on Instagram. One point three thousand Instagram followers, Justin. Uh, and Hercule, he said, can I send you two songs by email? And I said, what kind of songs? Uh, because, you know, I'm not, su- I'm not a guy that's like super picky about music, mm-hmm. but, uh, if we're going to play, you know, a track on the show, <coughs> I'm going to devote time on the program to it. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, be my episode. I kind of like, yeah, it's just, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be on the, on the Ario. Well, what kind of music do you like? Um, I've so I when I was a kid I just like rap music I was a little white kid in suburbia yeah. listening to rap music as is tradition. Uh huh. Um, but uh, I got older, got into indie stuff. I've been working a lot in music stuff for the past year, and I've been exposed to a lot of different stuff. Yeah. So my taste has kind of gotten a little bit wider. It's evolving, diversifying, diversifying. Um, I realized I didn't. I'm not listen to country. I know Ben. Yeah. If I say it to Ben, he'll probably make me listen to country. But Ben listens to country. Yeah, he loves country. Ugh. Um. He loves country and he loves folk music. Um, folk music, so I don't mind. Yeah, folk music is pretty good. But I'm I'm now more into like indie stuff, punk stuff. I like a lot of loud music right nice. now. Nice. Loud cool. stuff. Loud stuff. Wake me up. Wake me up inside. Can't wake up. Man, that's my favorite. Do you like uh do you like like scream screamo? Um, do you like screaming? Not. Do you like, you like freaking that's a little too screaming? Loud. That's a little too loud. Yeah. You don't like to scream? I like to scream. But you like when they like just, to, you like when they fucking you, jam You hard. like making people scream? This guy, I need to bring him around more. He's like, <laughs> hype me up. I love this. Um, Tell me what's happening and in what the I next wanna, game. And what I want to say is, uh, it's not like I'm... I don't want I don't want this to be it's not like I'm doing this on your episode and then uh, that's going to be it. Like I want this to, uh, I want, you know, up and coming artists to keep... Using our show as a mm-hmm. platform. Anyways, uh, so he sent us some songs. I said what kind of songs, and he said sweet reggae music. I personally like reggae music. I haven't heard a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm I mean, really I mostly more. just know Bob Marley, but yeah. I've uh, there's a band called Zion Lion that mm. I like, and I recently went to Jamaica. Hmm. <laughs> On like a pilgrimage of <laughs> sorts, <laughs> just to <laughs> listen to the music <laughs> and stay at the beach. Mm. And uh, anyways. Uh, we decided right here, uh, you know, we'll take a quick listen. There's a commercial break. So we're going to listen to uh, Frontline by Soprano Silver off mm. of Silverlight Rhythm, uh, the hottest and newest reggae artist of 2019. Are you guys ready? Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Me 
I've been through this time. I know me comfy take what is mine. Propelling with a positive yeah, mind. Because I'm your ability, I know me lyrically in time. Get a use of some long time. For peace in my soul. That's why me now commit no crime. Just listen to me round punchline. Me begging and appealing to the youth and no feel live like no swine. I am from the ghetto where the poor now have a time where the Makes me want to smoke some ganja. Look at that. Justin does not want to smoke ganja for the record. <laughs> you said the guy is from uh, Kentucky you made this? <laughs> country? I forget what you said. <laughs> oh, what did you say? Country? Yeah. Uh, this is a Jamaican, a Jamaican artist. Oh, not the Jamaican Queens. <laughs> JFK music? <laughs> what? JFK Airport? JFK Airport music. <laughs> really cool album cover, too. I don't know if you can see it. That is sick. That is sick. I like, I like it a lot. This I like it on a shirt. I like this song a lot. This is very good. Uh, front line. So that's front line. Finally, music I can show my grandma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By Soprano Silver. We really like that one. You guys like that yeah, one, that right? Yeah, one that one was really good. Uh, we're going to play one more track. Just a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're not getting paid for this, by the way. No. Maybe uh, we should... On- uh, we, we like to be paying him. We like to elevate other artists. If I didn't like it. Yeah. If I didn't like it. And if we didn't like it, we'd cut it. But it's, we it's like it. It's very similar to when J. Cole shouted you out in that new verse of his, remember? That's true. Mm. He when said he shouted me and Ariel out. You yeah, remember what he said? You remember what he said? No, what was it? Remind me again. He said <laughs> <laughs> Remind me what it was. And what was the name of the track, Justin? Uh then I don't remember the name of of, <laughs> of the track, the track. But, uh, I can't remember which John it was. But he on. said he said he said something like <laughs> sitting on my couch watching anime on Streamcast. <laughs> Man, I gotta clean my kitchen listening to Hunter Davidson Radio Hour podcast. <laughs> Man, we love the that Ario said that. Berman episode. The Ario Berman episode specifically with that Silver Day Soprano front line. All J right. Cole out. That's what the track was called. J. Cole out. He was like, I am announcing my retirement. Peace out. J. Cole out. Paid a man quick. I mean, quickly another three-pointer. Really just wrapping up the Yeah, I think I'm the one with Justin on that. Porzingis, 15 first quarter points. And before this game started, and I don't want to pull a LeBron James moment. Shut up, bro. Before this game started, I did look at you guys and say, what if Porzingis drops 50 in the garden? And you both said that would not happen. It's not going to happen, though. No. He's on pace for 60. He's on pace for 60, bro. Come on, man. Well, I don't know about that. When it, NBA is not a <laughs> not an on pace for kind of yeah. game. If I was playing as Porzingis in 2K, he would get at least probably well, 78. I mean, points. we can change the. Why don't we freaking play 2K like, New York Celtics right now? <laughs> you don't want to cry on camera after I beat you so bad. Yeah. I, I'll I'll cry on camera over it much easier. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cry over way less. Um, all right, so one more track from Soprano Silver, and then we'll uh, we'll get into the show. Love it. This uh, this one is titled Babylon Confusion. Ooh. He watched the movie Babylon Whoops. and he was confused. <laughs> Why is there an elephant? Soprano Silva, an elephant. Right at the beginning, there's an elephant. Was there? Hold on. Right at the beginning. Oh, uh, when I first opened it. No, I'm talking about the movie Babylon. Oh. oh. See, this this is the type of conversation that gets them confused about the movie Babylon. I just had some Babylon confusion. Yeah, we just did. We just did. <laughs> I watched the movie Babylon and I was confused. <laughs> Why is Margot Robbie famous in the past? Shouldn't she be famous in the present? Let us 
the critical reception was not what I thought it would be after seeing the movie. He's gonna be a verse on Spider Man in that movie. Talk about saving the city in a verse over that block confusion yeah. beat. Our uh, name is Spider Man, not Peter Parker. I don't know that guy. I'm saving the city and I'm looking super fly. Spider Man, Spider Man is what they call me. Sugar Man, Sugar Man, what your mom call me. <laughs> Sorry to Soprano Silver. It's tough to get by on your own track. Your oh, beat was shit. just too good. You, you know guys should to link up. You guys should link up on a track, dude. Yeah, hopefully, DMs. He's next. probably gonna see that. Yeah, man. he'll probably hit you up. That's probably gonna be all over social. Dude, you didn't tell me you could flow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to tell anyone I can flow. You need to show I just, us. I'll I just be honest. Show that I flow. Your rhymes could use some work. Mm. Oh yeah. Your bars could use some work. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that Jameis Winston. <laughs> yeah, it was like the uh, let's kick some ass, Tampa Bay. Uh, it was let's a lot kick like some that. Jack ass, Tampa Bay. <laughs> but uh, you did have flow, man. You were on Thanks, the beat man. hard. Thanks, man. Mm. Uh, Ariel, thoughts on uh, Soprano Silver? And two Justin's of the rap? best musical guests we've ever had on the, on the show. On the what about Justin episode? Bieber? He just came on. <laughs> I, know, I mean, third best well, of the day, I think. I don't know if it was, I don't really know if that was actually Justin Bieber. Uh, wait, he's actually, he's tapping me on the shoulder. Um, hold on, I'll talk to him real quick. Mind if I pass him the mic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. pass the mic to Bieber. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Justin Bieber. All right, man. Speaking as, the, speaking as the guy who knows these things, speaking as the guy who knows these things, I don't think you're in the shot anymore. That's fine, man. <laughs> I miss him already. Uh, let's get into the show, huh? Let's do it. Where are you from, man? I'm from New Jersey. Um. <laughs> New Jersey, dude. Uh, oh. The second New Jersey uh, guest we've had on the program. This is true. And uh, what uh, part of New Jersey are you I'm from? I'm from North Jersey. Ben is from South Jersey. Oh, okay. I'm not a... Central Jersey. Is there some? Believer. Is there kind of like a uh, any sort of rivalry there? Any kind of beef? There's a beef. I think it's pretty one sided. Um, it's that everybody acknowledges that I think the southern part of Jersey is not the best. Um, mm. I think the people from wow. there would disagree, but that's them. And what um, would they? Ha- wow, that's those seems like heavy. It seems like you just. <laughs> The the beef is that people think the South Jersey sucks and where you're from is good. Yeah. No, no, people think <laughs> <laughs> Well, we think that. Yeah, got it, got think it. Yeah. They think that we're elitist assholes that we live right next to New York City. And they're not wrong. Okay. None of that is incorrect. It's kinda like Michigan, Ohio almost, in Jersey. Yeah, possibly. But so then here's the funny thing is where Ben's from is in the middle. Uh the north doesn't claim him and the south would. <laughs> So he considers himself part of Central Jersey, which is this thing that people who don't want to be from South Jersey Sick. have made up. Oh, uh, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's a way to cope from yeah. being from South yeah. Jersey. Yeah, 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 yeah. The way I look at it is if you have a reason to be a Philadelphia 76ers fan, you're from South Jersey. Uh, okay. Beca- wait, I'm confused by that. Because the geography is right That's Pennsylvania. That's right well. by, okay. okay. Southern Jersey is right by um, Philadelphia, not Pennsylvania. Oh. And... Uh, what kind of like uh, Italian neighborhoods? Definitely, definitely not Italian neighborhoods. No, I'm very Jewish. I'm from yeah. a very Jewish area. Yeah, um, very Jewish, very segregated area. Actually, in fact, the place I live in my town is referred to <laughs> as the Hebrew Hills. Whoa, whoa, segregated. Segregated, segregated is, in, is like, not a word I was expecting not to hear. What on I meant the to podcast. say. <laughs> this yeah. is how we. This is a crowd. How do you feel about segregation? I mean, I'm not. I'm not a fan of it. It yeah. sounds like there's, yeah, not to call out the crowd, but it sounds like there are some people who are not booing. Like it sounds like kind of a <laughs> mixture. There was actually a small cheer at first. There was which definitely um, a kind of. Yeah, Mary Hep, thoughts it. on yeah. segregation? Enough. Come on, come on, guys. What are your thoughts on segregation, Mary? Let's get Katie. <laughs> ridiculous. What? what? <laughs> oh my oh, god! Holy shit! That makes what I said totally <laughs> holy fine. Holy shit! We're gonna cut that. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, um, but <laughs> the point I say segregated is um, historically it was segregated and yeah. then it never really 
started intermingling. Came. Oh, weird. so it because only it, New Jersey man. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 parts of the city are separated by train tracks, like literally. So there's like four quadrants. What in the Bob Dylan? <laughs> the other you were from the other side Come of the tracks. On. Literally, I was from the Come Hebrew on. Hills, that corner of the tracks. And it was um, mostly Jewish up there. Jewish in the Hebrew Hills, and then there's a like Korean side, and then a like lower income side, and then like um, I think there's an Indian side to it. I really okay. didn't spend time like. Hanging out around. There's not much to do in the town where I'm from. Okay. So it's not like you'd go around. Like, there wasn't, like, you go to 7 Eleven. Yeah. It's small town shit. Yeah. You do small town shit. You do small town shit, and if you're, cl- you're 10 miles away from New York City. So if you want to do. You can go into this. You can yeah. hitch a ride. How do you get into the city, dude? Um, well, the way I always did it was bus. There's uh, a bus that's bus right in by the my city. house. city. Whoa. Uh, it's $5. It's called the Jitney. The uh, Jitney. Route 4 Jitney. I just was on the and how old were you when you started taking the bus into the city? Uh, probably like 14. Damn. 14. Damn, that would have been sick. Yeah. Being that the bus. The, the thing I like to do when I go back, city. if I ever have the opportunity, like if I'm just going for the day, I drive in at like 10, 11 a.m. I p- find somewhere to park the car for free all day, and I leave at like midnight. Nice. Uh, there's no traffic. Mm, there's no yeah. traffic either of those times. I'm in and out, and you can be in and out from where I live to, like, Midtown in, like, 20 minutes. Whoa. Wait, no that's traffic. actually kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. But there's no traffic. There's really traffic. close. 10 miles. 10 miles. 10 on miles. On yeah. On an empty that's highway. That's nothing. Yeah. That's fucking, holy shit, take you in this city. How long will it take you to go 10 miles? Take you. Yeah. Uh, fucking hours. I don't know. I've never tried. Uh, and... You went to an all-Jewish school. I did. I went to a private all-Jewish school <sighs> all of my life Oof. until college. Wow. Um, so I went to private, like, lower school and then private middle school and private uh, high but school. But it wasn't all male. No. It was co-ed. It was co-ed. But in, like, a weird all way. All-Jewish. Wow. And how big was it? Um. So the high school I went to is the biggest school I went to. There were, uh, let's say. Like, ever? No, not Michigan. Until was, Michigan. Michigan was bigger. All right, you said the biggest school I went to. <laughs> I meant, like, before I went to college. <laughs> this guy right. says, there were, yeah, there were 33,000 <laughs> undergraduates at my high school. All right. <laughs> I'm just asking the questions I'm anticipating the audience. Is oh, okay. Yeah, sure, right? I, yeah, I figured I would spend a couple hours responding to people in the comments. Yeah. So. AMA. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is. This is a bit of It's a... It's a Hunter AMA. Literally. Yeah. Hunter, ask me anything. I right, continue. And I will, yeah. Um, so there were about 800 kids in oh. my high school. Okay, in the high school. Okay. Total. So oh, it's pretty decent sized. Yeah. Pretty comparable to where I went to high school. Um, and what would you, like, looking back, what do you think is, the, and now that you have, you know, been to a secular school and mm-hmm. heard stories from people that attended secular high schools. What do you think is like the some of the biggest differences? Oh, there's so many differences. Well, number one, the biggest difference is just the time you spend there versus the time you spent at a public school. Uh, the school I went to is dual curriculum, which means you have double the classes and half of them are about like Jewish studies. Okay. Um, my high school, my lower school was a little bit less. It was like, I think it was like eight to like three. I think it was eight to three. When I was in lower school, middle school was 8 to 4, 15. And then high school was like 7, 30 to 5. Jesus. Every day. It's a full-time job. Basically. Literally, yeah. Um, it and was, so you would do like, what was it, like math, language, arts in the morning? What it would was be intermingled. It? Your schedules would be all messed oh. up. So it would be like, uh, we're going to learn the Bible uh, at 8 a.m. And then you're going to have math. I mean, 8 a.m. is just an egregious oh hour to be opening the Bible. God, so here's dude. the thing. There are a few things I want to do at 8 a.m. And one of them is not opening here's the, the fucking thing. Bible. Here's the thing. You show up and then there's prayer for an hour every morning. <laughs> All right. That's number two on the list of things I do not want to do in the morning. And then for like 30 minutes in the afternoon as well. <laughs> afternoon, once I've had a coffee, yeah, I like, just feel like <laughs> lunch with the boys. Like maybe you can get me on my knees <laughs> praying a little bit. Praying. It's just so hard to be thankful at 7:45. Nothing to be yeah. thankful about. <laughs> no, they had this. They had all these rules about. Imagine like, if they put Thanksgiving at like in the morning. Like instead of Thanksgiving dinner, it's Thanksgiving <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> 
continue. <laughs> they had all these rules about prayer too, about like attendance and whatever. Um, yeah, like yeah, I imagine, dude. You better fucking show <laughs> up. He's watching the next. <laughs> It's pretty egregious. No, they literally had we had <laughs> fingerprint sensors. What? You'd fingerprint what? into to you had biometrics. Literally, and mine didn't work. <laughs> James <laughs> Bond ass bullshit. You'd you'd come Brick. up and it was like such not like they had a thing where you swipe your student ID first, <laughs> then kids God would just damn. hand their student IDs to their friends and be like, swipe me in. So they could skip class. So they could skip class, do whatever. Nice. So they were like, nice. we need to get way more advanced really yeah. quickly. And they were like Let's get fingerprint every single Holy kid in, shit. in this. My school was crazy, bro. <laughs> Let's bring in. Can we get a CIA consultant <laughs> to rig our school? I mean, I'm glad you guys have good security. Yeah, I mean, they probably need it. Right that seems now. more. <laughs> that seems more like keeping you guys in than keeping oh other people God. out. Though security guards, we loved the security guards back in the day. They got fired because we used to hang out with security guards, and they had they had security cameras everywhere, and we used to ask them to like replay funny moments from our days. <laughs> yeah. So we would go in and be like, "Hey, like, can we see this?" Like there was this one time my Somebody friend got tripped and fell. No, he's in the gym. <laughs> he he's in the gym. <laughs> he got hit so hard by a basketball, <laughs> he crumpled to the floor. <laughs> had to get like picked up and wheeled out of there. Oh <laughs> Jesus! And knock a teeth teeth out. Like, Where did he get hit in yo, the head? Head. He was like, Damn. he was playing on one hoop. It came from the other side. Damn. It hit him. It was so funny because it comes off screen in the yeah. video and it just hits him really got hard. Got that CTE like, pack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so good. Gary got fired. <laughs> that? No way. Yeah, That's like, a bummer. Gary, you can't be showing people. Oh, that. wow. Damn. So they kind of, would you say it was a bit of a strict environment? Oh, so strict. So um, some things to understand about my school is... Um, they're like they abided by like not only like like rules of a private school, but rules of like Jewish religion were like Ugh. part of the things that you had to do if you were gonna go to the school. But like, but not they, really. this wasn't Orthodox Judaism though. It's close. So okay. I don't know how much the Hunter Davidson Radio Hour <laughs> listeners know are are knowledgeable about Judaism, but there are different sects of Judaism. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> can we get the. Uh, <laughs> Hey, come on. You said it. You said it, man. 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 Let's go back to my earlier point about <laughs> the different back. groups in Judaism. Sex. Uh, sex. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, shit. Look what's on the screen. Oh, shit. He's saving the city. Oh, he's saving the city right now. I'm so proud of that guy. Oh, I fucking love Spider-Man, dude. Um, but there are four main sects, I would, I would say, um, that you could fall into. And so it's. I'm going to go from top is the most strict to least. So it's Orthodox, Modern Orthodox, Conservative, Reform. Mm -hmm. And those groups differentiate based on like how they, much they believe in the Bible and like what the rabbis say after. They all believe in the Bible. They all share that. And then it's like what they decided was like part of it for their groups. Yeah. I was Modern Orthodox. Okay. Which means like the way I like to put it is like I would know who like I would watch TV. I would have a phone. I would know who Lindsay Lohan is and whatnot <laughs> as a child. But on Saturday, I would be zero technology. Yeah. Um, you kept kosher. Kept kosher, like all of those things. So it would be like kind of like being Amish one day a week a little bit. Mm. Um, That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Amish one day a week and then like kind of a hybrid type situation. And then just like just like a pretty religious person kind of. Yeah. Would you say you were a religious kid? Yes, I, I mean I was, but like not of my. It was just like I grew up. I didn't Around know any non-Jews. Yeah. I like didn't really know what the world would be outside of that. Wow. I'm since not. Yeah, right. Um, but as a kid, I didn't know anything else. Yeah, we called it. Funny enough, we called it the bubble. <laughs> Everybody in the bubble calls it the bubble. Yeah, sure. Um, but At least you were aware of it. Yeah, we were all aware of it. Like, and some people were like, it's less of a problem than other people, but like. Coming out of it, like I kind of learned a lot of things about life that, like, that wasn't people, getting into like, the bubble. Yeah, like things that, like, just general things that, like, normal people or non religious Jewish people would do on a day to day basis that would be like a thing to do. I was like, oh, that's news to me. Nice. Like uh, what? Um, <laughs> what, like what? Um, say it, oh, say it, Justin. What do you have to say? What do you have to say? It's not important. <laughs> <laughs> okay. just, I'm just I'm thinking of like eight jokes in my head and laughing at myself. All right, can I get one of them? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
That's fine. They're, they're, they're for an audience of one to one person than me. I'm just going <laughs> to laugh at myself because I think I'm funny. Just keep shaking your head. While the Knicks get, oh, Jalen Brunson around a screen, mid range jumper. Cash. Ooh, bottom do you of the know net. about Jalen Brunson? <laughs> What you know about Jalen Brunson in the Brunson? <laughs> uh, sorry. Don't talk to my man like <laughs> that. Hey, I don't we like gotta it. get Adonis. You can't do it. I was actually thinking when you started freestyling earlier, some of your flow. Oh, felt- what you know about <laughs> RJ Barrett in the D? He likes that when he likes that, man. <laughs> what you know? RJ Barrett in the D. What you know about? <laughs> 8-0 run from the Knicks. Sorry Love to, to uh, quick basketball to break. Uh, oh, oh, Drew. Oh, no. Oh, no. So I got one. So one of the things I would say is yeah. um, me personally, like the only concerts I'd been to growing up were Jewish concerts. Whoa. So like do we have some people that I would, I would, I would urge all of you to look into Nissan Black. Nissim Black. Matis Yahoo is a classic. Not everybody knows Matis Everybody knows Matis Yahoo. Yahoo. Yeah. Nissim Black was this guy who like was like like kind of like born again in a in born a Jewish Jew. way. <laughs> He's a born again Kanye Jew. of, of <laughs> Judaism. <laughs> he was he was um He's Je- he's uh Jeffrey Senior. He was, what, he was from, dude from George Michael George, Senior. George, from, George literally, Senior literally, from literally, from he was in prison. Yeah. He was in really? prison. Oh my god. He became god. an Orthodox Jew and started rapping, moved to Israel like Whoa. Um, started rapping in Hebrew. Yeah, combination. Whoa, and it would dude. be. We had a concert for him in my high school. It's crazy. That is, wait, at your school you brought him in. They brought him in for the. What was he in prison for? Do you know? No clue. Wow. I remember what it was. So Nissan Black, you like? You ever listen to the Maccabees? Um, the Love the Maccabees, man. At my Come on, <laughs> nice, dude. Anybody you can mention, I've seen. Perform. Wow, they cut, your school's got fucking reach, dude. What yeah. the hell? I wonder, well, to be fair, all those that. people are in the New York area, so mm. yeah, they're local. They're local, local artists. They're local artists. Um, but so when I grew up and I went started going to other concerts, I was like, whoa. These are like font. Well, there's there's, <laughs> there's other music. This is cool, and like the men and women aren't separated by a giant wall. Which is cool. <laughs> that's kind of fun. That's I so. Can, that's what your school is like. Yeah. So they not- had to keep them away from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come a on. wall is not enough. <laughs> um. Only in like in prayer, there's a separation. Why in prayer? I don't. That's what know. they do in Israel, right? Separate the, the big men wall is or just all orthodox. Orthodox, all orthodox yeah. yeah. Damn, dude. Um, but don't also, don't want you getting wait distracted. For this, wait for this. Justin, <laughs> just wait for this. Boys and girls were not allowed to touch. I mean, like fingers. Just, like, like if I did, that, you were you were probably like, eh, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Justin acts like he would have been just yeah. rolling. I in didn't. At I school. did not. I did not say anything <laughs> of the sort. You'd be killing it. I, I genuinely think, like, respect to you, brother. Like, uh-huh. I, I think I probably would have struggled at Jewish school. Mostly I know I would. I, I had trouble or? during. I mean, Hunter can speak to this too. Like, I think both of us had trouble during like yeah. the high holidays, like mm-hmm. staying awake for that long. Like, you're at nine a.m. on like a Sunday. You're Ugh. just like, oh my god. Ugh. I mean, my Hebrew school. How long was your high holiday service? It was a couple hours, but that wasn't even like mm-hmm. every Saturday. First couple hours, like of Saturday morning, mm-hmm. like three, two yeah. to three hours, we're in temple. Okay. Every every single Saturday, and that was really difficult for me. So I I respect you. Yeah, that was my childhood. Plus the like hour in the afternoon on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And like I feel and like the, I feel like church night. can be fun. Like I feel like church is like it's pretty chill. It seems like it's pretty I'm, chill I'm, I'm and like at, at least you know the speaking in English. Yeah, in for the most part. <laughs> Depends which church. No, da- like <laughs> so much love for my ancestors who spoke Hebrew. Uh-huh. Mm. I don't know if they ever. I don't think they ever spoke to you actually. So, did you guys that. have donuts at your Shabbat service? No. Did you have donuts? Or no? I was re- so I was going back to the four levels. I was reformed yeah. Jew. So after Shabbat service, you know, we'd say say our prayers, drink our wine and our challah. But then there would be mm. like we'd say a prayer over some like sweets, some sweet food. We'd eat some cookies, some brownies, some donuts. Dude. Brownies and cookies. It was literally like, uh, what well, was Hagafen for bread? Yeah. That's for wine. I think. Or Hagafen was wine. wine. Yeah. And then. Oh, Afi Komen is bread. That's. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> well, no. So there was, there were, let's go through them all. Uh, 
Are you sure you want to be saying God's name in vain like that? It's not in vain, dude. But you're not making a blessing. What's it? What is it for? No, apples? you can't. You can't say Yahweh. What is it for? <laughs> what is Sorry, it? Sorry, please. We're gonna have to beat this. We're gonna have to beat this. <laughs> What's the one for apples? Do Damn, you know it? Suck. Um, uh, manzana. Oh, that's that's Spanish. <laughs> that's actually. We'll move on. We'll move on. Ha, bene, bene, vimin haaretz. Yeah, really? I think you're right. That's apples. For so apples? Yeah. In my middle school, Fruits we had. Of the tree. I guess in my so. middle school, we had a bracha bee, which was like a spelling bee, but like Whoa. they would give you a food Either. and you have to say what oh, blessing nice. you say on it. I like I that. I failed that immediately. <laughs> I was like, that's one thing, even when I was like a super religious little kid, like I didn't know this. I was like, yeah. I was literally that's fronting. Tough. They would so, do like, I'd start quick follow up. Mm-hmm. Might not be that quick. When you were a kid and, uh, you know, disregarding any mm-hmm. views you have now, like, were you fully, and this could be a question for you, Hunter, yeah. like, were you fully invested in, like, oh, everything they're telling me, all these biblical stories, is, this is what happened. This is, like, like how much did you believe I think when flipped, you were introduced it to it? I flipped at a certain point where I was, like, this stuff doesn't really, like, make sense As soon as he parted the Red Sea, you're like, ah, yeah, he didn't do that all shit. Right. <laughs> all right, come on, man. <laughs> what is that? Cause he I, didn't do all that. I do <laughs> remember, like, read it. Like, I remember reading that Moses parted the Red Sea, and it was, like, around the time that I was reading Percy Jackson. And I remember, Yo, at, I remember asking my mom, like, <laughs> Oh, he, Moses did it like Percy Jackson. And my Sick. mom was like, don't say that. <laughs> Do not tell anybody that. No, I that. respect your mom. I feel like it's the right answer. <laughs> yeah, Moses also stole lightning. That's yeah, another from thing. Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, what, what, were you, what about you? So, like, when I was a kid, it was, like, taken very literally. Yeah. And then as I grew up, it became started taking more like taking it more metaphorically and figuratively. And I would say all my friends that are still religious now, which I don't have so many friends in general, but I don't have so many friends in that are still religious. I have a lot of friends who are like me who are kind of out. I have some that are still religious. um, But the ones that I would say I really hang out with are not the ones who take it all so seriously that are like, this all literally happened. It's like more, the messages. The messages and yeah. whatnot and things like that. Yeah, I think I like when I was a, like I was such a as a kid, like wanted to try hard in school so bad that like I took to the Hebrew school like hard just because yeah. Mm-hmm. But like I think as soon as I was able as soon as I like I, I did become <laughs> suspect of the mm-hmm. you know, the godly aspect of it all. Mm. But I did always always through now um really like the ideas of like you know sadaka charity like i like the charity aspect and just the the being kind you know just like the be a good person Mm. and i liked that it didn't uh you know i liked that that they didn't talk about the afterlife i I think i think not jumping off that like i think there's a lot of things about judaism uh that and and i'm sure other religions are like this too i'm just yeah. not as familiar but there's a lot of aspects of it that don't feel religious they feel like uh different philosophies on life and yeah. i i think that was always something i'd never paid attention to and uh i think that has has lingered longer yeah. but as a kid i was way more focused on you know how the fuck did he part that ocean <laughs> yeah what the hell what was i kinda... think it's interesting i think like growing up in it i didn't really see anything outside of the strictness of like the things that i was doing right because my life was so regimented and yeah. like there was no other come on way man. of things happening that i didn't really think about it but then getting when i was like when i turned around like 14 or 15 uh well around my bar mitzvah i was kind of like i don't know what this is for me and I was like questioning things, but then once I hit like high school, and I was like, "Yeah, this isn't like what I want to do with my life." And it, that was a long time of deciding that, but it was only at that point that I kind of start understanding like what the benefits were of the lifestyle. Um, that was pretty sick. Nick's okay, Nick's cut it to five points going into great the half. Play. Um, and the community aspect, the like, yeah, helping I did each always other. like that. The um the ideas of like, ph- like there's some ph- philosophical ideas that I like in there. Yeah. I had so many bad experiences that it like is weird for me now. And also like when you're so like forced to do something and there's so much pressure on you to like be a certain way, and then you 
don't do that anymore, it feel like all of your feelings about it get confusing. Yeah. Because it's like, do I actually dislike it, or is it like there's like a little kid in me that's like, I hate this shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Or like, like, or like I'm mad at my mom. Like I don't yeah. want my, my fucking parents maybe come yeah. here. Yeah. Um, I think sure. I feel like they needed to offer another incentive for kids, like. Mm-hmm. Donuts yeah. is a good idea. <laughs> the sweets, brownies, whatever, good idea. Mm-hmm. Still, especially if this is like a weekend day, yeah. not enough. Like there's right. better stuff that kids want to do on the I weekend. I want to sleep in. You want to sleep in. You want to watch cartoons. Yeah. You want to just eat cereal and yeah. shit. Uh, play freaking Mario to your eyes bleed. We did. So what, what kind of what kind of incentive can They're, Jewish people, because Jewish people, Jewish we, got, we got a lot to give. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we had a like a, uh, and this probably still isn't enough. We had like a recess at our Sunday school. That's pretty good. We got to go out and throw football good. around, play some That's football. That's great. That was nice. I think I think that would be great. Yeah. If, all, if they just made that, if like the Jewish Pope who <laughs> maybe exists. I think it's Mel Brooks. Yeah, Mel Brooks. If Mel, Jewish. Mel Brooks <laughs> the Jewish Pope. Just was like, <laughs> every Jewish school. <laughs> he lives in, in the Vatican That's Bernie City Sanders. Of America. <laughs> every Jewish school needs... <laughs> that is still Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Uh, Bernie Sanders. So Larry Every David, Jewish school Larry, yeah. needs a recess. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be equal. <laughs> yeah, I almost, I almost went into my Bernie impression, but I'm saving it. No, oh, for sure. I'm going to bring it I'm going to, not the Knicks are, you know, next ha- hour half time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it ready. I'm going to leave it to you guys. All, All right, man. I'll say a good, goodbye when I'm goodbye. I miss pulling you. through. I miss you already. Man, dude, I'm going to be sad. When you're when you're not when you leave this podcast when you leave yeah I'm going yeah. on a mission trip yeah. he's going on a mission trip he's gonna <laughs> spread Judaism <laughs> to the world going on spread a Jewish Judaism to the world near you starting you're, with Mel Gibson you're going to <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank oh, you man. Justin oh uh, man I'm so glad we don't gotta beep bleep his name that would make that, <sighs> that would have made nice that really idiot. hard that would have sucked <laughs> <laughs> but. To wrap up that yeah. last discussion, I would say point to my... I just went to my best friend's engagement party. Nice. Um, he is religious. He's Jewish. Uh, I love him. He is the most well-adjusted person I've ever met in my life, and his family is the exact same way. Cool. We've had these conversations about like what his family did right. Um, not that my family did anything wrong, but that's debatable. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but what his family did really well is they like... It wasn't that they made it an option so much as they kind of, like, gave motivations for everything that they did. And they kind of made it a thing of, like, this isn't about believing things outside of yourself, more as, like, how you interact with the world. And, like, he, because of that, and because of, like, their, like, ideas about interacting with the world, like, all of them are, like, wildly successful people. And they're all, like, he's the oldest. He's, like, a genius. He's working at Amazon. He's crazy. Uh, His little brother, his little sister wants to be a state trooper. His other little sister was on Broadway. Um, she was Damn. in Marvelous Miss Maisel. <laughs> okay. Um, his littlest brother, super cute kid, uh, is also doing like TV and he was on Broadway a little bit. Damn. Um, his little brother, I mean, when I think of him as like a six-year-old kid, but like, right. and he was like He's doing up, Broadway. Though, yeah. um, his sister was in The Lion King on Broadway. Whoa. Um, but like, they're all so talented, and it's because, like, they gave them... Also, this dude can play the accordion. That is an instrument that I've always wanted to play. Yeah. We went we went to Italy together, and there's this dude under our bridge who's playing an accordion. And I was like, he wants to play that. And the dude just gave him his accordion. And he freaking... And he just went with it. He just went crazy. Damn. Just under a bridge in Venice. Damn, dude. Bridge, accordion. That's um, a good one. But, so I would say, to any prospective parents who are trying to raise your kids Jewish, I'm looking at you, um... Just be chill about it. That's my advice. And do it. Just make do it. it. Even if you're not Jewish, make your kid <laughs> Jewish, dude. There is it's two Catholic people watching this yeah. who are like, should who we have married? a baby? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. And it should be Jewish. And make him Jewish. <laughs> uh, so at what point do you start, like, you know, making videos? When when do you? Okay, so yeah. there was, like, so what's funny about this is, as a kid, I always loved movies and TV and whatever, and I was watching incessantly. I was watching always, all the time. But, like, I didn't know that it was a thing that you could be interested in because my parents, like, were... My dad's... Little backstory about my dad. <laughs> my dad's an immigrant. My dad's from Russia, uh, left the former Soviet Union to come to America. My mom is 
from Missouri, so no excuse. But <laughs> they're is not she Jewish. Yeah, they both are. A Missouri Jew. Yeah, St. Wow, Louis. Wow, I didn't know they were down there. Um, oh, St. Louis. St. Louis, Missouri. Um, there aren't so many still there. My grandparents yeah. are still there. But um, what's interesting about my mom and my dad, too, is that they became more religious as they got older. Huh. Um, uh, but they were not very into the idea of, like, TV or movies. They didn't really see the... As a career. Career, as a as pastime. A pa- as an entertainment source. As an entertainment, huh. as a... what They just didn't really, like, understand that, like, it was something that... Was productive. Were they big productive. readers? Were they like Reader, read? They like reading. Um, they just like were kind of like, what is this? And like, they were why just like we this? don't need. They, what, like, did they enjoy any kind of entertainment? They, like, what they was their do. It's still problematic. Theater, music. I try and recommend movies to them now, and mm-hmm. they still like. It's so hard. It's so hard because mm-hmm. well, my mom walked out of Jurassic Park as a kid because <laughs> it was too scary, and, I, and my and my dad only loves historical dramas. Right. So it's World like War II movies. I need to find yeah, historical right. dramas about. <laughs> That aren't like violent or scary. Um, and I think it's so awesome that like all dads do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every single dad just loves like historical fiction and just like mm-hmm. history shit. I just think that's awesome. Loves history. So like, <laughs> I'll be that. watching Drake and Josh as a kid having a great mm-hmm. old time. And they'd be like, "Turn this off. This is crazy. This is bullshit. Stuff sucks, yeah. bro." <laughs> and I'd be like, "I kind of like it." Yeah. So as a kid, I was doing all the time. I was watching this. Shit, I got into like independent stuff and I was watching interesting movies cool. all the time as a kid and then I was like but what do I like like yeah. what do, what's my thing right what do I like to do yeah. because in my head I had never thought that that was a thing that yeah. you could like right. or do yeah. I thought that was just a thing that people did in the past time yeah. or like in between the things when they were yeah it was I a was hobby like, I was like you're good at basketball or like football or something yeah right and then like you go home and you watch TV yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. That's what a human being that. is. Yeah. yeah, I just gotta figure out what I'm good at. It's right. like the Tim Robinson sketch where he's like, "What do you do? <laughs> yeah, literally. What do you but do? But what do you? Do? What's your perp? What's your point? What's yeah. the point of this? <laughs> yeah. And then eventually, and it's I. I tell the story to my dad, and my dad disagrees with me. He says it doesn't happen, but I think he's gaslighting me. So, <laughs> I as a kid, I went up to him and I said, "I want like I, I was a like kindergarten or whatever." I went up to him. He said, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" I said. I want to be a movie reviewer because you get to paid to watch nice. movies. Yeah. And then he said, there's a lot of journalism you have to do. And he started telling me all the things. And I was like, I don't think I want to do that anymore. Yeah. And it was like, if I had just, if he had just encouraged me in that right. moment. That's what you might be doing right now. I would not. I mean, I would probably be like 10 years ahead of where I am now. <laughs> I would have been ripping and running from the get go. You would have been writing movie reviews. Since I would have been like, like 14. Roger Ebert. Yeah, I disagree with you. <laughs> Bad take. <laughs> Bad take. So when do you when do you pick up a camera and start um, actually making shit yourself? So there was a big push of like, what do I do? What do I want to do? And I was like, I kind of think like this is something that I want to do. I want to try like making stuff. There was a thing in my high school that was not for this for any reason. Um, it was like a, I would describe it as a color war. You know okay, I do know what that is. But it would be each f- of the four grades against each other, and it would be one week without like school classes. Mm-hmm. And it would all be like r- learning religious stuff. Oh. But it would all be religious themed or whatever. Yeah. And there was a video component to it. The video mm. component t- was actually probably the least religious thing. Um, it would most of the time be... The general s- consensus was it's a parody of some sort of movie or TV show okay. set in the school of some in some sort right, of way. Right, 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 right. Um, and then the seniors do a musical cool. for the most part. Cool. Um, so freshman year, I was like, maybe I should try doing this. I was also like, I started realizing that I was into it. I shout out to my freshman year. Uh, she's the impetus for everything, actually. I should start with her. Freshman year, Dr. Berkman, my English teacher... <laughs> Greatest lady on the planet. Greatest. Love it. Comparable love to the Berkman. great Terry Saris. Ooh, love it. But wow. An angel, Dr. Yeah. Berkman. Dr. Berkman is a 70-plus-year-old woman. She used to come up to me in the hallway and tell me, I've been working out. And then she would, like, hit me. Because <laughs> she thought... she was Look like, how I'm, strong I am. She was like, I'm tenured. <laughs> she would curse in the middle of yeah, class. She'd be fuck. like, I don't care about yeah. this. They can fire me tomorrow. Yeah. I don't have anything to live for. Yeah. And I would, like... I would lose it. At everything. Yeah. Best assignment she ever gave. It kills me. She assigned a book, um, like a book report or like a, like an essay. or We had to do some sort of test on a book. 
in three days. She was like, you have three days to read this book. And then it was like a break we had right after those three days. And she like got the principal, then we started complaining and the principal came in and was like, it's fine. And then we come in on Friday and she goes, there's no test. I just wanted you to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. That was a great, great teacher trick. Yeah, though. she's a legend. But so she was the first person that was like, so a lot of what we did in religious Jewish school is like, you look at the Bible and you think about like, what are the deeper meanings? What are the subtext in this? What's the like point of yeah, these what's the, things? What's, what's the, the message? Theme? What's yeah. the message? What's the ideas that like you're supposed to imply to your life? And I had been doing that and I was really good at that as a kid. Cause I'm like, kind of like, that's something that I'm geared towards. And then she was the first person that like movies do this too. Oh, Cause I had cool. never put that together. Cool. So she showed, um, what's the movie with Robin Williams and he's the teacher. Good Will Hunting. No, not the Good Will Hunting. Oh, Dead Poets Society. Dead Poets Society. She showed Gattaca. Nice. Um, she showed whatever. And I loved it. Like I was like, nice. I was loving those things. Like I was like, never thought of like a movie as like a text before. Yeah. That you could analyze. Cool, cool. Um, and so she saw that I was so interested in it, and she made me president of the film club. Nice. The film club was 30 minutes to an hour after school once a month. President gets to decide what movie we're watching, and then we just come in and talk about it. Cool. Um, I was with, shout out, Aiden Shankman, who's my co-president, friend of mine. Um, we would pick movies, and we would talk about them. I would lead the discussion. It would be really fun. But she really was like, this is like a thing, and I was like, this is something I really like to do. So it was like that color war thing came around. Um, it was like time to make a video. I was like, I want to, I want to do it. It sounds fun. Yeah. Um, I ended up being in like kind of de facto, like being in charge. I don't, I, you know me now, so you know I like <laughs> kind of taking charge of things. <laughs> but at the time, I was a little shy. Okay. But just nothing was getting done, so I was like, I guess I'll do right, this. I gotta take the reins here. Um. Then. Um, so then that kind of got established and like we got better every year. It's pretty bad at the beginning there. It's pretty bad to, I, I mean, it was, it's not bad. It's not terrible. That actually the last two things we did, I just rewatched. Every time I go home, I see my friends and yeah. they want to rewatch them. Right. But let's look at that thing we made. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, they're like, actually they're like for kids in high school, they're pretty good. Yeah. Um, pretty well put together. I would say, um, we did an office parody that the last right, video that we did, I've seen yeah. that you've seen. Which I still think the opening monologue from is really yeah. funny, and uh, the, the title sequence I thought the was, title sequence was is well done. Yeah, we had a lot of like talented kids yeah. who like all like wanted to be involved, and like cool. I would have to wrangle them, and I would kind of have to like get on people's ass about everything. But the the thing was is at first it was like like you do it; it's one week to do it, and you have to be done by Thursday afternoon. Okay. Um. So it starts it's supposed to start Monday. Um. So Monday you get the topic, or Friday you get the topic. Of whatever your topic what thing it, is, yeah, it, yeah. and then you like have to come with an idea of like, okay, we're, by we're Monday, writing the script. Rolling. We have to start yeah. shooting by Tuesday. Right. We have to be finished and to be editing by Wednesday afternoon, um, and we have to be done by like middle of the day Thursday. Thursday. Hmm. Um, cool. Uh, so you were kind of getting deadline practice in high yeah, school. Yeah, and the practice. coolest thing about it was we got better at shifting the rules the further along we got into it. So we tried writing um, first. We tried doing it like just in the week, and it was like really hard. To get everything we needed like because you come up with an idea you need like stuff you need like where to go um you know so we started what we started doing towards the end was we would write the script in advance weeks in advance nice leave spaces right. to add the theme in there nice in one of the videos we made we the last video we made senior year before we did a vi senior dinner video which was like um like out instead of we didn't have prom we weren't allowed to have prom <laughs> um whole story about that well, what is that we weren't allowed to have prom because it was not a good representation of our high school is what they said. Whoa. And they would they threatened to withhold your diploma. Because you, kids would be grinding on each other. Yeah, they wouldn't like that. Yeah. They wouldn't they didn't want that. Drinking, no, nothing. They were scared Ooh, so yeah, terrible. Drugs, they would yeah. uh drug test my high school. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. What? They got a little bit Just of to head. go to school. See the funny thing about the drug test, not to go to school, but like they would they would specifically target the bad kids. Whoa. But the thing is is that they ne we had a theory they never actually sent them in. Yeah. Because they would just take your like hair, like cut a piece of your hair, mm -hmm. and tell you you came back positive, and if you cop to it, then you were fucked. But you if were you denied everything, but if you denied, um, then nothing. There's a famous story about one kid, a friend of mine's younger sibling, who had definitely been smoking weed, a lot of weed, um, and he got tested by the school. They called his mom, um, you know, said you're positive, 
She said, bullshit, took him to the yeah. CVS, drug tested him. Her Herself came back negative. She said, you're fucking lying. Yeah. And they dropped it. Wow. They dropped it. Whoa. Um, Whoa. But all this to say that we made one last Color War-esque thing video <laughs> that we literally left a space in the script that said, insert theme here. And then we... Um, we found out what the theme was. We all ran to the library, asked the rabbi to come help us, and we just like, I still, to this day, what we wrote makes no sense to me. <laughs> but the rabbi was like, this checks out. And I was like, sounds good. And, <laughs> and we, we put it in, and then the next line after that part is finished, it's like a flashback right. sequence with like, sequ like, so we just did like voiceover, and then like, Stuff from the, what happened before, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then and then uh, the next line is like, oh, like that's really cool. It sounds like you just threw the theme in there, and he goes, yeah, that's what I did. Meta, dude. It was <laughs> Super meta. meta. Nice. Super meta, bro. And at what point does at what point do you start thinking about Michigan? So interesting. Michigan story is that. Um, because of all this religious stuff, is like I had decided that I wanted to go to film school, some sort of film school. Nice. I actually decided I didn't really want to go to college that much at all. Cool. But my parents were not having that. Yeah. And to be fair, that wasn't a battle I think I was going to win with them. They're mm -hmm. very into like getting educated, yeah. doing all that stuff. Like they weren't going to be like, that's cool. With yeah, us. fine. Don't do it. Yeah, they weren't going to be like, ah. Yeah, I, your dad was like, yeah, I, I came to this country for jack shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I wanted you to be a failure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was like, so the deal we struck was if they didn't, um, well, first the deal we struck was kind of like, I wanted to go to, to apply to all the film schools in the country. My college guidance, terrible college guidance I had, uh, decided to convince my parents that schools on the West Coast specifically in Los Angeles, of all places, were not Jewish enough for me. Places that I wouldn't be able to get kosher food or <sighs> regular prayer service. Things I already wasn't doing. Things that you weren't seeking out. Things I actively already didn't want. <laughs> and I was like, weird, we're having this conversation, yeah. but cool. Also, there's definitely schools in L.A. that would do that, yeah, right? Yeah, there are. Yeah. There are. And so they're convincing my parents. That they had a whole thing at my high school about like where we want to send our <laughs> so kids funny. to. Um, LA isn't Jewish enough. Go to Michigan. <laughs> go to, literally, <laughs> literally Mich Maryland is the number one school. Maryland's Maryland. Jewish. Yeah, Maryland has a very big Jewish community. Hmm. Um, Michigan was like. That. So the idea was, I wanted. To, I was like, we'll compromise. I'll go to NYU. Like, I'm. I'm cool going to NYU. Yeah. Um, like whatever. College guidance told me that the application was. Uh, I could apply to three schools in NYU, three of the departments in the film school. Okay. So I spent all summer that senior year working on a video, a script, and uh, a, um, I forgot the third thing was, like an essay or something about. Yeah, like a theory. Like a producing yeah, okay. thing. I don't remember what it was. So it was I, was, I spent all my time working on these three. And then I got to the college like the like the couple weeks before, and I called. I was talking to the guy, and he was like, "You can actually only apply to one department." Is that true? Yep, that's Damn. the rule. So, so I which spent. Which one did you go to? I spent all summer working on three separate when things. Should have been one. one. Yeah. Yeah, and then I like not, I think one of them would have been good enough had I spent all that energy in one of them, and then didn't get in, and was pretty upset about that. Michigan was my second choice because nice. I was like safety. Yeah. My parents liked it. It's so whatever. Um, Michigan was accepted me early, early, and then I had a, yeah. I was like, holy shit, I don't know anything about Michigan. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck. I don't I'm know what they do over there. So I was like, I frantically was like, all right, all bets are off. I can apply to any school I yeah. want. And my parents <laughs> were like, that's fine. And I was like, okay. So I start looking and I'm like, it's past the deadline to apply to every city yeah, right. in California. I missed the Texas deadline by one day. UT Austin? UT Austin by one day. Yeah. I missed, um, so I applied to... Um, Boston University okay. and Wesleyan. And I'll, okay. I'll never get over the fact that Wesleyan rejected me. They did not ask for an SAT score. They asked you not to send an SAT score and an essay. It was literally just my GPA. And they rejected oh, me okay. off that. I'm Fuck like, you. what the heck? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, but I got into Boston. I didn't really, I went to Michigan. People were super nice. Funny full circle story, actually. I working out as an editor, assistant editor. I recently was had to leave my last job because of a couple things, and and I was talking to Michigan alums, and I talked to this person. We're talking, and 
I remember I was reminiscing about this time that I went to visit Michigan and I went to the oh Justin you want to say goodbye? Alright, I'll finish the story real quick. Yeah, yeah. I went to the editing suite in the basement, and this I was like, I was so lost, I didn't know where I was going. And I was this girl was editing in there, and I was like, hey, can you like show? I have, like I have no idea where I'm supposed to be. I don't know where I'm at. And she was telling me about the program. She brought me up to Mary Lou, whatever. That was this person that I was talking to oh, in cool. LA. Um, oh, sick. Yeah. So just out here. Yeah, That's just dope. a full circle moment. She's an assistant editor. She's really nice. We'll get her on the show. We got to get her on the show. Got to get her on the show. She worked <laughs> on uh, Strays. Nice. Uh, we're a huge fan of that. These movie. guys yeah. love strays. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So the idea was like I was worried. I was really worried about it, and then I went to Michigan and I was like, "Your fears were eased." I also not. I wasn't. I'm not a big football person. Uh, I like basketball. Yeah, that's true. And it was like, what am I doing? Like everybody yeah. I had met. It's football both, school. I don't really want Justin to say goodbye. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mic's off. Mic's off. Bring the channel back. There you go. Turn my mic up. <laughs> hey, do my, my headphones off? Turn my headphones off a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. New York yeah. Knicks, baby. We cooking the Celtics, baby. You ain't a dick, baby. You a vagina, baby. Mary have thoughts? <laughs> All right, that wasn't my best. Uh, Mary have thoughts? Uh. New York <laughs> Knicks, baby, we back in the garden Not looking like fat-ass James Harden We balling out all the way to 50 wins, baby And if you don't have a complaint Then stay away from the trash bin, baby Justin's going to Australia Woo! Down under. I'm going to Australia to down uh, learn the ways from some famous Australian rappers, and mm, I'll come back Aussie with a lot of bars. So just three rules while I'm away from the podcast in the house. Okay. Three rules. Number one, please throw out my arugula in the fridge. It's going to get bad and it's going to smell. <laughs> okay. N- number two, um, uh, bye bye. don't have too much fun without me. Okay. All right, that's fair. And number three... Don't let anyone sleep or have sex in my bed. What about I'm Burko? the only person <laughs> who is about? not allowed to have sex in my bed. What about, uh, <laughs> nice. What about Burko? Burko? He, he's, uh, he can, You're going to let Burko bed, sleep uh, in your bed? Uh, I'm not going to let him sleep in my bed. <laughs> but, you know, if it, happens, if it happens and I get you, some Burko I, smell on my... <laughs> on your this sheets? is Ben's friend, my roommate Ben's I think, friend. I think I'm going to put him on the podcast. That's awesome. <laughs> That's funny. So you'll have to ask him on the spot. You'll have to be my covert agent. Yeah. And see if he slept. I'm gonna in my just. Bed. I'm just gonna try to convince him to sleep in your bed. <laughs> no, I already. I already took like 18 different angles of my bed and everything in my room. <laughs> so if anything has moved, I'm gonna know about I'm it. I'm gonna go in there and move so many things. I wanna do some crazy shit in your room, man. Like what? <laughs> like. I'm gonna get real comfortable in there. Oh yeah, yeah. If I find a stick of butter under the bed, I'm gonna get <laughs> mad. I can't wait for Charlie to have such a big new Ooh, room. I'm gonna oh, let I Charlie so. go crazy. I love Char. Char can do whatever she wants. Char can do whatever she wants. Are you going to the airport right now? Uh, I'm gonna get some some grub. Mm. Uh, then probably gonna cry about the Knicks for a few hours, assuming mm. they lose this game, and then uh. Gotta We're go in the airport. Half yeah. We're second half team. I've been saying. I don't that. know about all that, man. It's a long season, man. We're a team. It's a long That's season. That's for sure. It's That's a long. Sure. It's a long season. Hey, look, I'm actually. Uh, you know, I'm not going to Australia anymore. Flying Why? out to the garden. I'm gonna be traveling with the team next few weeks. Oh, to yeah? do what? In what capacity? Team I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be the starting center <laughs> team now. Team rapper. I'm team they're, rapper and starting center. They're, put, yeah. they're changing you out for Mitch. Uh, yeah, they wanted a, a Jew under center. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Get out of here. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have fun, man. Dri- please have safe travels. Safe travels. I safe will. travels. Have a shrimp on the barbie for each of us. A shrimp on the barbie. Oh, a shrimp on the barbie, lad. Do me a favor. <laughs> do me a favor. and Not Australian at all. Just do me a favor. And when, as soon as you get there, just confuse things about New Zealand with Australia. I want to see how people react to that. <laughs> He's confusing Britain with Australia. I'm going to ask everyone <laughs> if they like Taika Waititi. <laughs> <laughs> He's from here, right? Yeah. You guys like our flag means death, yeah? yeah. Bye, man. Yeah. Tell your tell your parents I say hi and I love them. Oh! My shirt. I'm glad I my new shirt. Justin his got his new, new shirt. shirt. Big Amazon package of a new shirt. What? Ooh. Well, <laughs> we kind of have to wait for you to yeah, leave. Yeah, kind of...
Get hey, out of here. you're all good, Get man. Have fun. Have safe travels. Miss you. Bye. Oh, well, there goes Justin. Yeah. Uh, we love Justin. Yep. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Ooh. Yeah. Hitting it. <laughs> Where were we at? We were going. We we're coming to Michigan. Oh yeah, we're coming to Michigan. Um, I. Okay, so important to note that. Um, I chose Michigan. Everyone was super nice on my visit. I was like, I think it would be better for me to come here, see what's up, um, see what's going on. If I don't like it, I can always transfer, do something, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't think that ever really came into my mind that I was, I might have, I think I might have if things had went differently and just life things, but I think I got pretty entrenched in Michigan pretty quickly. Yeah, you put down roots. And then also so COVID happened right. really quickly. So it was that like fucked everything up. By the time I was like like by the time I was like outside of COVID, I'm like, there's one year left. Yeah, I'm not gonna well not finish. Finish like, it out here. Yeah. And like while I was in COVID too, I was like, there's nothing else to do right now but get a degree. Yeah. So whatever. it's like anywhere else I go will be more or less the same as yeah. this. And also I had a girlfriend at the time yeah. that it was like a whole thing. So it's like, you know, like where am I like why am I going? Like, where am yeah. I going? But I will say coming to Michigan was a big shock for me just because on the one hand, like, let's keep in mind here. To this point, the amount of non-Jewish friends I had growing up was close to zero. I would say I had one or two when I was really young. Yeah. Don't remember who they are. Don't have never kept in touch with them. Um, I had a crazy relationship with a personal trainer as a child um, <laughs> what do you mean like not like crazy like <laughs> nothing happened yeah. nothing happened i'm actually surprised nothing happened because <laughs> me too by the way you said it so it was this dude who was like his name was hawk okay. dwight hawkins <laughs> dwight hawkins God, it went by i was hawk. an overweight child yes always still mm-hmm. am overweight child mm-hmm. um but i wanted to get into like being healthy, whatever. My right. parents were like, um, we'll get you a personal trainer. That seems like the way to do it. Uh, which is wild. I was 12 year old with yeah. a personal trainer yeah. named Hawk. Um, <laughs> but me and him like became good friends. I, I was, I worked out with him for four years. Damn. Okay. Um, once a week uh, to twice a week. Okay. Um, there was a point there where I broke my arm and he was like, we're just running suicides. We're just running. He was wow. like, he was like, we're running suicides. Hawk was like, I'm not losing this fucking check, dude. <laughs> Why are you going to keep working out? Well, I made Hawk work for it. I would be like, I would be a little dickhead. I'd be like, I would be like, look at my watch the whole time. I'd be like, you got 45 minutes. What are you going to do? Come on, me? Hawk. I was yeah. like, what are you going to do? Better pick I'd it be up. I'd be like drinking water real slow. He'd be like, stop doing that. I know. Uh, I got to hydrate. Yeah. And he would do a bunch of different shit. Like yeah. he was helping me play like basketball i wanted to get better at basketball so nice. he did some stuff like me with that came to my bar mitzvah nice um super sweet guy but the reason i say i'm surprised nothing ever happened is he used to a, a grown adult man my parents met on the internet um picked me up twice a week from my house for four years never once yeah. did anything weird happen to me that's prime that's yeah. prime he moments. even he even well, listen to this yeah. he took me to a gym that his friend owned behind the bogota golf course in like this weird, it was in the basement of an abandoned building, man. And nothing ever happened to me. You think he's just a cool guy? Yeah, man. Do you think he ha- has any idea what his actions might look like from an outsider's perspective? No, I mean maybe. Like, I don't do you know. think he's ever thought like, man, this looks bad. This might look bad. I think maybe, but. I think he was pretty... Res- first time... <laughs> he didn't start picking me up until we were, like, a year in. Yeah. So I would meet him, and, like, my parents would drop me off, and, like, we'd go to, like, a public park. We'd be still there. Yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah, we're, at, we're witnesses could see you. Yeah, we're, like, we were outside yeah, in the daytime. Smart. That's smart. My parents were like, we know we know enough. You still keep in touch with Hawk? Uh, he reached out to me, like, a year or two ago just to say hi and check in. Um, see ya. What's he doing? He moved yeah. to San Francisco. He was a cool guy too. He actually like he told me he lived in like five different countries. Uh. He um he did a lot of like sports video production. Uh. So like he his other hustle besides like being a personal trainer was like um was like making high school like highlight videos for athletes. Nice huddle football highlight things. Yeah, stuff like Sick. that. Sick. Um, Dope. So <laughs> Sick job. Yeah, so that was the probably the longest relationship I had with somebody who wasn't Jewish, and I was going to a school with thirty three thousand people, yeah. of which 
A lot of them are Jewish, but not in the way that I was. <laughs> mm-hmm. And also, like, tons of different yeah, you people. you get a lot of, of Jews like me all of a yeah. sudden. Yeah. And I'm like, y'all know about this shit? And you guys are like, kind of. Oh, fuck no, that sounds wild. Sounds wild as fuck. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Um, Culture shock, for sure. Yeah, and, and I was like, also- we're, we're, so... I've, were all of your teachers in, in high school, middle school rabbis, or just the religious ones? The, there was a mix. Okay. Um, every single person at the school, save for like one or two or three, um, would have been Jewish. Okay. Um, really? I, I just figured they were all Jewish that worked there. Uh, no, some people were just people cool. worked there. Like mostly, not if they taught like Jewish studies right. usually. That would right. be weird. Right. But, was, yeah. um, but like... We had a couple that weren't Jewish and whatnot, and like a fucking algebra teacher that just yeah needed in the a job. school yeah, yeah. security as well. Oh yeah, security Usually that makes not, sense. But, <laughs> but like also some a couple <laughs> teachers every once in a while. If all of the teachers were rabbis, oh so or just the religious. All the religious studies were rabbis. Every once in a while, they would cross over and do like an English, okay, such a, sort of thing. Sometimes, um, mostly not though. Mostly it was pretty separate. Um, but that meant that because we were dual curriculum, my entire childhood K through 12, K through 12 was dual curriculum. It meant that half of my teachers were rabbis. So there were always rabbis, right? always rabbis around. And now you had, you probably didn't have any rabbi teachers at Michigan. No, no whatsoever. How did you feel about that, that change in... Oh, I was ready for it. I was yeah, so done man. with. I was so done with all that stuff. I was yeah. so done with the pressure and the stuff. And like, I had some rabbis that I had. Re- I had one rabbi that I had a really good relationship with, and he's a really sweet guy. Um, shout out Rabbi Shulman. You know Shulman. who you are. Thank you, Shulman. Um, and then everyone else I didn't love, <laughs> but I could say some kind things about some of them. Sure, they and worked hard. They worked hard. There was one guy who made my life miserable. Uh, I hate him. What's his name? Uh, we bleep it. Yeah. Rabbi. Tough um, name. Yeah. The oh, he's back oh from Australia. God. He's got an accent. How was Australia? <laughs> What'd you forget? His water bottle. Fucking water bottle. Yeah, we just saw Julius Randle splash a three to finish off a 10 0 run to make it a one point game in the garden. So that guy um, basically decided my senior year that I was his pet project to make more religious, to like, ugh, ugh. which was tough for me because I was already getting Ew. so much flack from my family and like Gross. going through a lot. Oh, so they su- they wait they this, this guy made it like so flack much flack from your family for not being religious. It enough? was like growing pains sure, of like them. Yeah. they've gotten better now, but like, and it's still not a hundred percent. But it's like. Like, it was a big deal, and it was yeah. whatever, and it was, like, a tough time for me. Sure. Being, like, deciding that's not what I want to do, like, kind of getting outside. Because everybody, when they leave my high school, is, like, getting more. They go to they go to Israel for a gap year program, most people. I was one of the three people who didn't do that. Damn. In my... In, my in your class. Actually, yeah. I would say 10. I would say 10. 10 okay. out of 160. Okay. Damn. Um, And so that guy made my life terrible. Um... Decided that he wanted to fix me. It was crazy. To, not on his credit, because I was doing this, but in morning prayer. Um, you've, any of y'all know what a talus is? It's a mm-hmm. funny story. Talus is like a thing. You're supposed to only wear it when you're married. My family, for some reason, we marry, We wear it when we get bar mitzvah. You wear it mm-hmm. from then on. Yeah. Every morning. You also wear it to fill in every that's morning. What ours, that's what ours was, too. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Talus. Bar, bar mitzvah and then on. Um, yeah, so every morning I was supposed to put on my, the straps and then the big sheet on top of my head. What I would do, I would just put the big sheet on top of my head, put my head face down on the table, like as if I was like really into it and just be asleep. I would like be asleep from the the moment it started until the moment it ended, just face down. Nice, dude. Um, you found nap time. I've I invented nap time. <laughs> I was inventing ways to get back to nap time. I'm the CEO of nap time. I was literally I was, I was killing it. I was there to just boop fingerprint, fingerprint Check in there. It on the fingerprint scanner. Like, nap it up. Yeah, if I could have found a way to just like just give somebody my finger, I would have. <laughs> but um, but so he would like come over and be like giving me things to like read out of and like like jo- yeah. jostling me. And I'm like, leave me alone. I don't want. I'm not I doing anything. I don't fucking care. I'm not. I'm not doing anything to yeah. you. He obviously he's my teacher for one class. 
he kept like picking on me in class. It was pretty bad. It was like a really tough experience. <laughs> he 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 asked me. He was like mad at me for one of those things I did in the prayer services, right? Mm-hmm. Again, didn't distract anyone. Just being by myself, doing nothing, no harm to nobody. Goes starts yelling at me. Goes talk to me after, and I just left. Yeah, I, was I don't like, want to do talk to this guy. Yeah, this guy's crazy. That's kind of a power move, a savage power move. Just yeah, talk to me after class. Just be like, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. Damn, I wish I would have done that. So I left. Um, and <laughs> like the principal, one of the assistant principal called me to the office, <laughs> chewing me out. He's like, you can't just leave. That's so disrespectful. If the teacher wants to talk to you after class, yeah, you I was have like, to. he won't leave me alone. I always thought it was so dumb that I have to fucking pretend that yeah. this teacher is my goddamn mom or dad. Yeah, I was like, I don't respect this guy. This guy, I don't. I, don't I really respect. don't think I should have to do with this. I don't guy respect says. this guy at all. Yeah. Actually, in fact, um, <laughs> and so then I, I had to go apologize to him. And my apology was it was as sincere as it could have been. It was like I would appreciate if you just let me be. Yeah. Um, and I was working it out with the assistant principal. He was like, "We're gonna find you another place to be. Whatever, We're gonna switch you out of that class. Whatever." And then, so the the guy, I go to apologize to him. I do this thing where I'm like, I just to don't the, think to the rabbi to this rabbi. It's being, and he goes, "Are you insane?" Are you an insane person? Why? Like you hate like people in general. Like who would treat somebody like that? And he's talking, talking about like, how you treated him. Yeah, by like leaving. Oh. Well, this guy's. Yeah, yeah this guy's. He also cut me off man. in traffic once. Whoa. And I, I, he cut me off. There's this lane where everyone cut, like has to go in from the right. <laughs> he cut me on from the left. Absolute dickhead move. <laughs> Never forgiven him. He's smiling. <laughs> So <laughs> let's get back to let's Michigan. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. So we meet. You're one of the. You're also one of the first people I meet. Yeah. At Michigan. This is true. Well, I was there a year. You were. You're a year older than me. Yes. 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 So yes. you already knew Brendan Dooley at this point. Oh yes, I knew Brendan Dooley. Brendan Dooley. I met Brendan Dooley. I wanted to do a short film freshman year. Um, well, I was in Imagination. I worked with Imagination once. Fresh semester freshman year. Somehow was the DP of a short film. Nice. Which I did not have the qualifications to be. Nice. Um, and it went about as you'd expect for those circumstances. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I wasn't, I was very like, also like my personality is very like indicative of like where I'm from and like loud and I'm like very yeah. direct. And so sure. a lot of people Joy-Z. don't love that. Yeah. Um, especially in Michigan. And that was also a learning curve for me. But not everybody is exactly the way like talks exactly the way where i'm from we interrupt yeah if you if you like if we have a conversation every time you speak i'm gonna start talking i'm gonna gonna, say something yeah yeah and we will lose complete like realms of topics yeah yeah. because we're just talking about something else went tangential dude yeah Yeah. like and i go home and it's the same way and i'm like this is where i get it from (laughs) nobody in michigan could survive this (laughs) um but i didn't know that that was a different like a cold like a barrier so I showed up like doing that. People were like, so in- rude. <laughs> Such a jackass, this guy. He's interrupting me. This dude fucking steamrolls every conversation. He's always conversation. got something to say. <laughs> he's not overly positive about things. <laughs> he complains. He's, he's, we call it <laughs> fetching where I'm from. He's fetching. If I said that to them, they wouldn't know what that meant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, am I an alien? I don't know. Yeah. So no, like, culture shock. Yes. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure it out. I probably that freshman year I probably don't interact with people yeah. in the best possible way to set myself up to be like uh, friends with a lot of people. I made friends and, and yeah. did whatever, but it wasn't like a thing of like I was making great connections and yeah. whatever in the film. The network you sphere. weren't you weren't maybe taking full advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't being as open as I should have been and more collaborative like I should have been. I was a little like hard headed and whatnot. It was not the best look. Happens. And I and I apologize to anybody that may be watching this that that affected in any way. Um, but I met Inesh and Trey. Give me that applause. And Inesh and Trey at the Imagination Crew Call, I believe. No, no, no. At the Imagination Mass Meeting, mm-hmm. I met... Uh, Wow, your Trey. freshman year? Yes. Wow. And I met Andrew Armstrong on wow. the set of that short film that we did for Imagination. And was, wasn't Ryan Duggan in that? So we did this, the second semester we did we started a short film that never got finished, that was not very good, that um, probably will never be finished because I've lost all the footage since. Yeah. But it was a like tournament thing called Resident Apparition, which 
uh, could have used a couple more drafts of this. Sounds kind of bad. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty bad. It was about a RA that was a ghost. Ugh. Wasn't it good. <laughs> wasn't <laughs> good. Well, but to be fair, that. who wrote it? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say that. And I wish did. Man, I wish it together. <laughs> it was probably bad. It was not good. <laughs> It was not President good. Apparition. It was not good at all. It was not good at all. I can't even stomach watching any footage of it. President Apparition is pretty funny, though. Yeah, it was a funny title. It was the, my RA was really scoop spooky. He was like, yeah, he was he's like a eight, weird guy. He's like seven feet tall and he had like white hair and he would just like appear behind you. Don't, that's probably premise enough. Yeah. Yeah. Creepy RA is good. Creepy RA is good. good. That's kind of good. So we tried something and it was a lot and it's. Nah. But um, it's because by the time I met you, you and Inesh were like I was already linking you guys together. My, you guys were already a yeah, tandem. Yeah, I in mean my we were pretty close together because we, me, him, and Inesh, uh, and Andrew Armstrong, mm -hmm. had kind of we worked on that thing together. It kind of felt started falling apart, and it was like a thing that I was like, I don't think this is worth saving. Yeah, and yeah. like there were a lot of like technical things that we probably needed to learn to just sure, get, yeah, to get. 18, forward. 19, yeah. Yeah, to move forward in, in those things and just, like, like kind of, like, better uh, whatever. But it was a good experience because I would say... I, would, I always like to say have your failures in private. Yeah, sure. It's good. And something Andrew used to say a lot when we were in college is, like, I didn't go to film school to, to learn that much. I went to film school for four years of free failure. Yeah, sure. Um, So, like, four years to just kind of do what you want and it doesn't have to be good because there's no pressure. Um, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Trying and failing. So I've had a couple of those in yeah. life. It's like <laughs> things sure. you start, well, you, gotta have those. you do the whole thing and then you're like, ah, oh, this is not this good. Uh, this I, ac is I accidentally made a piece of I've shit. I made garbage and <laughs> I should stop. Well, so, this. so I, my freshman year, your sophomore year, yeah. I join uh breach of peace, meet you, meet Inesh, meet Brendan Dooley. Yeah, so I knew Brendan, the whole thing back yeah. to Brendan is that I met Brendan. He was one of the main characters, Ryan Duggan mm -hmm. of this apartment, one of the other main characters in that. Yeah. But Brendan Dooley, me and Inish went to a bunch of uh, improv things. And we're just like, if cool. anybody wants to be in the short film, we don't want to do auditions. Because nice. we don't know anybody. No we just want to have our friends that we know. We yeah. just we just want to meet somebody who's funny. And yeah, just think we can they can just do it. Do it. So we went to this one thing that was like... And you chose Ryan Duggan? No, Ryan Duggan was Andrew's <laughs> friend. This okay. other guy was actually supposed to be in it. I forget who he was. He was supposed to be in it, and then he like got sick last minute, canceled. Damn. And so Ryan Duggan was Andrew Armstrong's roommate. <laughs> and was like, I can do it. And That's he did so not awesome. want to be there, did not read the script, and was <laughs> very funny Ryan Duggan. Oh, uh, I love that guy. Very funny Ryan Duggan moments. He's going to come out. He's going to come to me. He's going to watch this. He's not going to watch this. But he's he gonna, never if, watches. If he did watch this, he'd be like, I read the script. I read, <laughs> I just hated it. And We're going to get like, him on the yeah. show one day, I think, maybe. Yeah, I, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he wants. I think he told me once he wanted to be on it, but I really don't know <laughs> if he does. I think he might have just been saying that, but I'd love to have him on the show. Yeah. Uh, we make College Geographic college together. The graphic. Also, one of the things, things that got the thing that got finished that I don't think is the worst thing in the world. Yeah. I think it's pretty not great, but I think yeah. like I think like it was a thing where it was like it's a three minute sketch. I think the premise of the sketch. Is I okay. think the script is good and the premise is good. Yeah. And you know, we just had film school early, early film early. school execution. That early happened. execution. Plus, we got ten. We had to get ten actors yeah. last minute. Yeah, to man. do a script that was written three hours before, <laughs> and we had to figure all of that out and the technical side of that. Well, dude, like, who was that girl that played like the Red Bull girl? Do you I remember her? I remember, and she was like, "I don't want to do it," and I was like, "There's literally only." She was one. a trooper. I'm glad that she she seemed cool. She, and uh, yeah, I had to convince her to do it though. I, I mean, that. honestly, in it hindsight, cool, a stacked cast: Rohan Malatira. Yeah, he was the best person in it, and we had him for the least screen they, time. He had one small scene, and he's he now wanna, a, well, that's, he's now like a good. Here's actor. the thing about that: is I'm pretty sure that's what convinced him to be an actor. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's what made him like literally switch majors I into know. the acting school. And we had fuck it. I mean, Katie Fitzgibbons, <sighs> Madeline Sunwoo Kim, yep. fucking uh, Rob Dorsey, Rob Dorsey. Dude. Julian Poza, Julian Poza, Man. Jake Primack, Jonah Sobchak, and, the, and then of course, Jonah, you know, Jonah the as the, uh, the vaping frat guy. The vaping guy. frat guy. <laughs> By the way, I showed this. People have since said like, oh, the frat stuff is not funny. But I showed this just for that part. I sent it to my 
friend who's in a sorority. I was like, is this funny? Is this to you? funny? And she's like, I find that hilarious. I showed it to a couple people on the floor and they all think they it's laugh. so funny. Hmm. And I was like, all right, well, it must have been me then. Sorry about that. I just thought <laughs> it was funny that like I was looking around the people that we had assembled for this group. And I was like, and Rob Dorsey, who still kind of played kind of a fratty guy yeah. in that and I think was a frat guy. Yeah. I was just like, he's the, like, nobody else here could really like, believably play that. But Jonah fucking <laughs> stepped up, dude. That Jonah did. And then. Ben uh, Servitaw's in that. Yeah, what is Servitaw doing? He's that? the but actually guy. I remember that's that. That's right, that's right. Which was a yeah, funny concept. Early, dude. Yeah, we weren't even close then. And then we didn't really work on another sketch in well, Breach of Peace, did we? We we thought of, there was one idea for something that, like, never. Traffic Man? I remember Traffic Guy. That I was traffic always like, guy. what is. Another and that thing guy's like, name was what was that guy's name? Sam something. Yeah, but I was like, well, what do we what do we do? Like, what are, what do we what does he do? He's like just like he was a guy that like really loved traffic. He was the guy. The premise of the sketch was like yeah, remind me, remind at me at the me. at the very busy intersections in Ann Arbor, like the State Street intersections. The cars are going pretty much nonstop, but there's a ton of foot traffic, and people kind of just cross freely. But uh, usually, like if you're out, if you walk, uh, you know, in campus enough, there's like always one guy. That will try to like put his arms out and stop people from mm-hmm. crossing the street so cars can get through. Yeah. So this was a sketch following traffic. It was like a mockumentary style sketch. Oh, following yes. this guy that that stops people from crossing the street. I remember traffic. at first it was pitched as like a narrative thing, and yeah. I was like, "What's the narrative?" Like he just he had this really grand idea that was like, "Well, we can't do that," but like I, I like, think it's kind I was of like, "It'd be funny, funny to yeah. like mess with people as like a traffic <laughs> yeah, guy." Right. But I don't know. If, and then we spent a long time discussing if that was legal, like if it's legal mm-hmm. to like just dress up like a traffic guy and right like do yeah traffic. get the actual shit and like like the f- which i don't think would be that uh, would yeah definitely i'm not, not sure i think if we got caught people would have been mad and we all like the channel started to turn into like uh almost like prank videos yeah and then but uh and then and then you know the whole thing happened and it was kind of quiet for a little bit and then yeah. open stomach global Open Summit Global, that's the next thing you do with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Me, Einish, and Andrew did the D-Lo stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which I'll talk about in lieu of them because they are not here. Right. I'm sure they'll be on the podcast at some point. Sure. Um, But those guys and I started a, with Brendan Dooley, who dropped out pretty quickly. (laughs) Yeah. Um, started a like film collective thing where we were going to, we went through a lot of things, but it was like film photography jobs uh, for money, and then we'd funnel that into short films. We didn't really end up making a lot of short films. It really just became a thing where we just did film photography jobs. Yeah. We did short we did stuff together, the three of us. Like it became like pretty good at like filming things together and like we would do that stuff for money and like that was a nice way to just have a little job. Yeah. yeah. And it was also during COVID. So right. it was like you couldn't really have more than three people on a set right. anyways. And we were in a bubble together, so it just worked out. So it was a thing of like a lot of fun and a lot of professional development and like just having fun with the guys, but also like making a little bit of money, I guess. Right. A um, little bit of money, not so much, <laughs> but whatever. Um, and it was cool. And I, so I was with them. And so then we were like, we, I had wanted to do the Terry sketch class before. And I had emailed her the Brendan Dooley year. I wanted to do it. And she was like, you're the, like, you're on the wait list. You're like the second you're, person yeah. on the wait list. And so the next year she was like, you're the first person. You're in. You're in. So I didn't even have to worry about nice. it. I was like, I'm good. So I was like, who's the class going to be? Who, what kind of bozos are going to be in this class? <laughs> kind of like hooligans. What kind of weirdo freaks are going to be in this class? And they were like, Ina Shintra is going to be in this class. I was like, fuck. My best friend. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. And then Andrew. And then Andrew. And you guys went on a bit of a prolific tear in that class. I think those two, I was so busy that semester that really it was, I have to give all credit to those two. I helped on pretty much everything that I realized after. I They took a lead role on way more things than I did, but I did do a lot just kind of in proximity to them. Yeah. But those two did so much. And it was like, it was like a thing of like, I would have done more stuff with them, but like, I also, like, I was writing 427 at that time. I was working. I, that was the semester I worked 13-hour days every day of the week, mon- Monday through Monday. So, like, no weekend. Crazy. Uh, I had 30 minutes a day to, and this was, I carved this out for myself. It was at 1 a.m. to do anything not related to work. Just to yeah, have a... To exist. I would usually watch TV. Be a human being. I would be like, that's funny on my phone in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Scrolling, and then I would just like 
pass out and be like, it would be up at 6 a.m. Be like, all right, we're going again. We're doing this. Yeah, it was. I mean, that was a crazy. I've, I was less busy than you, but still a yeah. crazy year. And uh, you know, we've talked about Open Summit Global. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your favorite? What my, was your favorite? My moment? favorite thing about Open Summit Global is like, I think, and I wrote this to Terry in the like feedback stuff. Yeah, it was that we all kind of knew of each other. Yeah. Um, I had known Hunter. I had known Ben a little bit. Jake a little bit. Uh, Mary Nearhouse, I have no idea who she was. Yeah. I still don't really yeah. like. I like whoever. Bit she of is. a mystery. Bit of an. Whoever enigma. she is, hard to figure out. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out later. I don't know, man. <laughs> but um, but um, you know, we had a lot of people. Priya Dana Moody. Yeah, for real, Priya Dana Moody. Laura Graney, legend. For real, legend. Lucas Jackson, Woo! future guest of the podcast. Woo! Hopefully, I'll he doesn't want to come on. I'm gonna convince. Him. I'm gonna make him. I'm come gonna on. convince him. Kristen Zorsey. Kristen Zorsi, <laughs> a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people. Dude. Apologies to anybody I didn't. Jessica name. Kearney, Jessica Kearney, um, Nick Swihart, Nick Swihart. Who am I thinking of? Aerospace right now. Uh, she's awesome. She's like the best person. Oh, ever. dude, Rachel. Rachel Harmon. No, 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 no. Byram. Byram. Rachel Byram. Rachel Byram. One of the best. Legend. Rachel Byram is awesome. Rachel Byram, awesome. Uh, so sorry Griffin James. Griffin James. Griffin Raggy James. Griffin James. Um. um that's a lot of people. Man, I think that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, Ryan, so right. Ryan Duggan. Ryan Duggan. Gotta that, say, yeah. um, but there's a, like an all star group of yeah. people. But you wouldn't like a lot of people who who take charge and do things. That was yeah. I think one of my big complaints about Michigan as a school, as, in terms of film school, was like it's not a lot of people who really want to go for things all the yeah. time. Yeah, it's a lot of people who are like ah. Oh. But yeah. there are people who do things and right. people who do great things there. No shade on anybody, but. This was a class full of people like self starters, go getters, go getters, self starters, a lot of stuff, and so it wasn't like motivating everyone. Everyone was super motivated to yeah. go, and also everybody was super open to like helping each yeah. other and being there and helping each other and doing whatever. And it was like cool to just be in an environment that was like so openly collaborative. We need to get that started out here. Yeah, we have so many cool creative people. Yeah, and we got to get started like doing stuff together. I wish we didn't have to have jobs. Dude. I know it sucks. I don't have one, but. It would be so Oh, that reminds me. I need to pull up Mary Nearhouse and come on this podcast, and next week I get a job. That's like, that might happen. That needs to happen. I could, if that happens, I'll feel so sick. That'd be great. All right. Live viewers at home? What? What did you say? I said for the viewers at home, if you oh, have a job, yeah. you want me to do it? Uh, yeah. Well, so let me say, last time I said there's almost certainly no chance that anyone listening yep. could provide a job. But... Things might have opened we'll up. We'll see Things what happens a week from now. You know, two weeks from now, we'll see. We'll see if the viewers have a job. Um, <laughs> uh, that was fun. And then, and then before you leave, we make. Um, yeah. So we did Open Summit Global. Hunter, you did your tight five. My favorite moment of that year. Honestly. I did do stand my. Re- I made my glorious return to stand up comedy. This was an insane moment for me, mostly because I had started this bit about how Hunter was going to do a tight five <laughs> at the opening premiere of this sketch show, not knowing in any way, shape, or form that he had done stand up comedy before. <laughs> I did it as a bit, and other people championed it. Yeah. And we started like, and we got him to do it, and he was getting up there and i was like he's going up there and i was like holy shit what I am i making him do there's like 50 people here there was more than that i think yeah there's probably there was like 100 people 75 100 oh, wait, no, people th- i worked at that michigan theater that theater holds 92 and we sold out yeah probably so 92 people 92 in there. people there and i had done stand-up i think twice before that yeah and and you got out there i was freaking out i was like holy <laughs> shit he tells his first joke and it's good and i'm like Whoa. yeah and then i was even more freaking out because i was like is he just naturally good at stand-up because <laughs> i was like he's never <laughs> done never this. done this <laughs> and, then I and i was like that's crazy you just did that for the first time he goes you go no it wasn't uh, and i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun that was uh one of my favorite moments uh mm-hmm. in all of college yeah um so cool and that that to me was like it felt like we were back like fucking you know basically a hundred of my friends and family were in a theater to mm-hmm. see shit that we made it really felt mm-hmm. like goofy ass shit that we <sighs> made. Really felt like we were fucking back which was awesome and then okay so and then summer so and, summer and everyone all of my friends that i just made like coming out of covid like i had a few friends that i knew 
from freshman year and like even from before college that I was hanging out with. Yeah. And then coming out of COVID, like I made finally made these cool film friends and then like over half of them left. Yeah. And we had a lot of fun like because we became like we all became friends. Yeah, we started hanging out a lot. Open Summit Global. We had the night with the fireworks. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. We started using I Inesh had a basement that he kind of that his roommates didn't mind if we just were went they there and were degenerate. Little, but, in. <laughs> but, but it didn't fucking I stop lived us. at that house. I was there yeah. at, before Inesh got there and after I was hanging out there. I did laundry there. I was there all the time. <laughs> right. I was like people would walk in and be like oh hey like people would like, just yeah. come in and they knew who I was. Like, right. Like, I lived there, but yeah. um, he had this basement that was huge and relative to, like, a college basement. Right. And it had, like, four couches and a giant TV. You and could fit the whole gang. You could fit there. the whole gang down there, and and I was there all the time for COVID, too. So, like, we he had fireworks one day after a shoot. <laughs> Uh, we like went out and uh, there might have been a little drinking involved, a little bit of sudden off fireworks involved. Yeah, usually. Yeah, that's kind of what happens. And then <laughs> the police showed up. Very fun <laughs> stories. The police showed up and they were like, hey, um, they rolled up, they were pulled on the window. They go to me and I know she were like, really not like we're respectable gentlemen at this point. Yeah. In the night. And they go, Do you guys hear gunshots? <laughs> and me and I just go, Yeah, that way. <laughs> <laughs> and then and they turned to us, they go, Yeah, thanks. And they like roll <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. There they go. Uh and then we make you we make you write blood relatives. Blood relatives. The story behind blood relatives is I was at a good place in life at that point. I was like therapy was going well. God, God, uh, thank God for that. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, sure. I was having a lot of like positivity and I was like, I was like thinking about radical positivity and I was like, it'd be fun. One last Michigan film thing yeah, with my friends, with my friends to do something about radical positivity. And then being me, I'm like a weird, like I like dark stuff. I like, so yeah. it's obviously it's like, how do you be radically positive? You just killed your roommate. This sick, twisted shit. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, that's the first idea that came to my head, and I <laughs> rolled with it. Yeah. And uh, so I wrote this script that um, it, it, came, it I showed it to Ben, I showed it to a couple people, got notes, did a couple drafts of the script, and then that it's dead. That happens. We've been gone for a while, so. Yeah, we're wrapping up here yeah, anyways. We didn't up. need the shot of me. Um, we're blood relatives. We shoot. Um, we spent a long time figuring out. It was also a fun idea just to be like, I want to play with like fake blood all the time. Yeah. I want to do um, something gross. Famously Mary Nearhouse. Mary. Why did I say Mary? Near? I looked at Mary. Hep. Oh, I said Mary Can we cut that? Can we cut that? Can we cut that? You gotta go like this. Oh, I hit the wrong one. Oh, that one Sorry. Kind of felt right, Mary Vincentia. Mary Nearhouse had no part in Blood Relatives. None she whatsoever. Is fucking Who is she? <sighs> what? She balanced the blood. Oh, that's true. For like a mm. second. She was complaining about it the whole time. Mary Hep made the blood. Mary Hep made the blood. Mary, Mary Hep DP'd the short film. Mary Hep was stand in in the practice stuff. Mary Hep, irreplaceable, irredeemable, era. Era, 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 uh, friend of the show, friend Mary of the Hep. show, Mary Hap, and we love Mary Hap. We love Mary Hap. Mary Hap's gonna come on the show. Soon. My current roommate, Mary Hap. Soon, yeah, your current roommate, and then we make blood relatives, and then you relatives. guys, you guys offer me a, a place to stay while I'm figuring out what I'm gonna do with my life when I'm. When I'm at a crossroads, like, do mm -hmm. I go to L.A. and follow my dreams? Do I fucking, you know, do was something Was it ever drastic? a question like that? No, it wasn't. I was always <laughs> going to come here. But I still didn't know. I still was very confused and scared. And when I came out to this big, scary, confusing city, Ariel and Mary Hep opened their doors for me and opened their couch for me. Mm -hmm. And I'll forever be grateful for that. You know? You... Like, we're only there for a couple of days, but you could have stayed as long as you wanted. Uh, it was very nice. It was a nice Literally, couple of days. You can sleep on my couch right now. <sighs> Don't fucking tempt me like that, dude. We do have a new couch. It's much better. We have a new couch. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> dude, we're at an uh, almost at an hour 50. Ooh. It was an XXL episode. And we, we should say, we should shout out Sienna Peterson. We should. Uh, Went to lunch. The great Sienna Peterson oh. took us, treated us to lunch today. Paid for the entire thing herself. Footed the bill for lunch, and oh. man, oh man, she did me and so Ariel much. and Mary really eat yeah. a lot of food. She was like, "Please, guys, I'm making too much money out here. In LA. <laughs> I need to just, I need to spend it I need on to you guys. Spend it. We need to go to lunch on a Wednesday." Ah. 
Ah, so we had chicken parms and chicken pizza parms and, and pizza. Ah, Caesar salad. Yeah, it was really I'm, good. Honestly, I'm, I'm ha- I felt like we, I mean, I felt like we did ha- made a good podcast. I think we did. I was worried about getting sleepy. Yeah, that's possible. Because I drank some alcohol, too, on top I of think, a real I think we belly. had a great podcast. I think there are parts of my life we didn't touch on at all. <laughs> Uh, that is mostly because of Justin's rapping. Yeah, I'm sorry. And honestly, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it. Because <laughs> the, thing about, the thing about me is I just want my friends to succeed. And yeah. If Justin Bieber gets Justin a platform, if he gets a platform, the that's thing about the best. <laughs> the thing about Justin is that he's abrasive and obtrusive, but <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> was, I would. This Incredibly is the best possible way. Me. And we're watching the Knicks. The Knicks are on, man. The oh, Knicks, they're up. They're up, and I think honestly we should we'll, we we should get out of here and watch the Knicks in their entirety we and should, see what happens. So, uh, um, I mean, obviously you'll be on the show again. Mary yeah. will be on the show soon, and yeah, thank you. And uh, you know, you'll be um, around. Oh, it's adorable. That's my elbow. I touched your weenus. Wait, can we get the sounds of that? Can we get the sounds at home? Kind of sounds like when Charlie goes into it. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta get Charlie out too. Charlie was a good, quiet girl after she fucked up at the beginning. <laughs> she All right, keeps <laughs> knocking over cameras. Crazy. He is fucking up. All right, let me uh, fucking put this on. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll what? see you. Yeah, wait, let it roll for a second longer, and then I do this.